Thanks everyone for uh, watching another video and here I'm going to kind of meld what I did in the first videos which did not go on YouTube which are um, how to crayon or rather how to make your own map proposal um, but I'm also going to be a lot more analytic than I was in the posts that led to in the not the post in the videos again they, they were twitched but not YouTubed that became my uh, US high speed rail uh, proposal the one that I blogged about um, here, so let's do a little bit of an observation high speed rail and hope that Google gets the correct one. I think it's called the high speed rail follow up. Um, so, this is not the map that I made, this is way nicer than the maps that I make. Uh, this is the map that I made, right? So I even said streaming, and this is the map that I made over, I think, two Saturdays, um, where red are the lines that I'm proposing, blue is the lines that maybe, but I'm not certain. Um, I'm not going to repeat this. So how do I, so first of all, how do you make these maps? Um, so... When I make maps, I use one of two tools. The first tool is Google Earth, and these are maps that are visible on Google Earth. They're usually not as pretty um, because they're intended to be viewed at any zoom level, which is kind of a compromise of one size fits none. Um, but Lewin, so while we're on the subject of regional rail, this is going to be one of my regional rail things. So you can kind of see that from a distance, you can't see it because all the stations kind of hog all the space and the names hog all the space. If you zoom in, it, so the thing is, this is intended to be continuously zoomable. Um, if you are better than me at coding, which refers to probably the entirety of the world's coding population, uh, both professional and um, amateur enthusiasts, um, then you can convert this to a GIS and um, with some extra work, even convert it to an SVG format. Uh, that might look good as a specific zoom. Um, but again, this is intended to be hovered. So all of these stations have names. Um, and by the way, I'm not going to endorse every single thing in this. Uh, I've kind of moved on from doing these in Google or uh, in Google Maps slash Google Earth to doing these in Inkscape. Um, Inkscape is more static. Now, it's not like Microsoft Paint, right? You can, it has layers, it can work in it, it's, it's vector format, but um, it's harder to get from the Inkscape format to GIS, uh, as, as I understand it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to just show you the code. Um, I will send it to everyone who wants, um, but uh, if you, again, if you're, an, if you're even an amateur coder, you are better at this than I am. Um, so this is code, so, there, so I'm not going to actually click, there's a code called Pile, actually, let me click, um, and this is even Python 2, I haven't bothered updating it for Python 3, um, so what this does is I, uh, it, it hard codes Zoom level 14, and you can play with these and get other Zoom levels, um, or again, if you're better at coding than I am, which again, refers to the world's entire population of amateur and professional coders, you can select the zoom level. What this does is you give uh, um, pieces, is you give the codes of pieces on uh, open street maps and it will grab them uh, automatically. And so this is code number one and this is uh, it's called, and this is code number two, uh, which is called paste, which uh, again, hard, which even hard codes the boundaries because see what I just said half a minute ago or a minute ago about my coding styles. Um, and what this does is uh, this can um, paste them all into one big image. Um, and the image is always called test. So uh, the last thing I made is actually a map of Southeast Asia. And what I think is zoom level, that has to be zoom level seven. Um, because at eight, I would see railroads and I don't see railroads. Um, this is for the World War III alt that I'm writing. So, the, uh, so this is the entirety of Southeast Asia, or also well, not the entirety, but mo um, nearly all of mainland Southeast Asia. Um, uh, and again, you can do this with everything. And I'm not going to do. I'm not going to regrab the New York code. And the reason I'm not going to do that is that um, 
the maps that I'm going to work from. So, for example, this is a post that I wrote two years ago called Assume Nordic Coasts. So this is all based on uh, the construction costs in uh, the Nordic countries, which are rather low. And uh, so, so this is based on a project called City Bonin in Stockholm. Uh, and a and comparable under construction project in Helsinki, um, and another in Gothenburg. Uh, so um, I'm not going to talk about construction costs right now, but uh, because I only know some of the things that make the Nordic countries work, not all of them. But uh, so, but I'm going to talk for a second about the base map. I made the, so this is again something that I did two years ago, I think, on Xscape. Um, this is a very large map, so you see 7424 by 5888 pixels. This is, oh, 29 by, I think, 23. What, 29? Yeah. 29 by 23 pieces, and this program is not especially efficient. So it's, I think, half an hour, 40 minutes to run the code on this. Um, I think it's because uh, I think it's because OpenStreetMap specifically tries to do that to avoid spamming. Uh, this is the same, but it's this map plus another strip, so it's 29 by 24, because uh, I wanted to include. So this is for so it's called circular crayon, but uh, because you can see this circular line that I was blogging about, um, that's in dark red. It's a kind of weird, very crayony uh, line that is circumferential, but not just circumferential. So, I mean, the G train is circumferential, right? It connects the two largest business center that are not in Manhattan with each other, so Long Island City and downtown Brooklyn, um, plus a bunch of other additions. So things like various subway extensions into Jersey, um, something with no... So the real subway map, uh, the what is colored red here is actually part red, part green, so it's the two and five trains, they terminate here. Um, and this extension is under Nostrand, which is one of the busiest buses in Brooklyn, I believe the second busiest, um, maybe the fourth or fifth or sixth busiest citywide. And uh, this, so in the historic post-war crayon, um, Second Avenue subway was always the most important line. Um, so this is Second Avenue. Uh, up until here it exists, from here to here it's under construction. Um, 25th, this uh, wraparound 125th is ground. Um, this was always the first priority, and the priorities right behind it were extending these trains. Today it's the 2-5 uh, up to uh, Sheepside Bay in, um, on No Strand, and uh, building from here. So right now, this is mix green-red, green, so the four train terminates here, the red, so free train terminates here. This is a rail yard. This is not a lot of construction. Um, this is uh, a, this is called Gateway Center. It's a new shopping mall in um, outer, outer Brooklyn. Um, so there's this idea to kind of do a curve on the four train like this um, on Utica. Utica is the number, I think, three bus route in the city. It's the number one in Brooklyn. So the busiest in Brooklyn are Frip, and Fripp, um, and, and one of the busiest in Brooklyn, maybe I think number 15-ish citywide, is rather parallel, it's Flatbush, so Fripp. So this is why these are very important subway crayons. Um, and again, it's so important subway crayons that right up until the 1970s financial crisis, they were viewed as the next thing to be built after Second Avenue subway. Even in the early 70s, People in New York City said, "Oh, okay, we're going to uh, wait, what? we're going to click on button. We're going to build Second Avenue subway. So we're going to build this. You might notice this is not under Second. This is under Third. This is deliberate. Second is not as commercial. Um, and uh, then we're going to build um, No Strand um, and Utica. And we expect this is what they said on the eve almost of the New York." financial crisis, they said, oh, and by, I think the year they said it was 1993, um, trains would run um, on the extension of North Strand. It might have, by the way, maybe I'm wrong, and it was, so at one point the um, plan was to merge them and build this extension instead, so instead of 
Utica and Nostra and the idea was to build this under Slatbush as a compromise. Uh, but um, this wasn't, but, I, mean, I mean, none of them were built, so it's not terribly wrong. Just giving you background on the crayon on this map. So there's the G as the existing circumferential. Um, one of the things that um, actually comes from the uh, third regional plan from the 1990s, from the Regional Plan Association, uh, is something called the Tribro RX line. This was mostly done by the then intern, current uh, senior person, uh, I forget where he works right now, Michael Furman. Uh, the idea was to, uh, so this is most, so all of the, so this is pre-existing tracks um, that are currently used by something like one or two freight trains a day. So before people started fantasizing about running more freight train service, uh, running more freight trains on this, which aren't happening, uh, the plan was to convert this to subway usage um, and then build something slightly different from this alignment. Uh, but one of the tunnels to be used has since been uh, demolished. So if you need to build extra tunnels, anyway, you might as well move the alignment a little bit to be better in the Bronx. Um, so this is a, another circumferential. This is entirely my current under Bergen line. It is the most important north-south spine of this part of Jersey. Um, it runs a mixture of full-size buses and jitney service. Um, it's so profitable that Jitneys run on it, uh, mostly uh, catering to immigrant populations. So they are, um, for example, advertise in uh, Spanish a lot, um, uh, make sure how to um, reach a local immigrant population, which um, is, I'm forgetting the exact mix. Um, so I believe, it, so it's not the, so it's usually, I believe, not Puerto Ricans and Dominicans, as in the city proper, or Mexicans as in the rest of the United States. I believe it's from other parts of Latin America from um, um, than what I mentioned. So I believe it's uh, a lot of uh, Cubans around here, Colombians, maybe Venezuelans. Um, and uh, the uh, and, and the jitneys run extremely frequently. So they're smaller than full size buses, um, but they're not van size. They're intermediate, and uh, I believe they run every two minutes. And um, that's not the only route. The, the, there's also there are also routes that all, are also hyper frequent for both New Jersey Transit and the Jitneys that use this to get to uh, Port Authority. So the idea is that um, instead of that, uh, the subway should run the circumferential, and then maybe there should be um, orthogonal lines getting into the city, or maybe um, the Gateway Tunnel should be built with a stop um, at the intersection point, which is going to be this one. Uh, roughly. Um, so again, this is all crayon, and, and this is specifically to set up new crayon that I'm not even especially wedded to, which is a uh, dark red line, um, which I started out to kind of argue against, but I'm slowly warming toward it. It's this outer circle that's designed to be at a much um, higher radius. It barely even enters Manhattan, only at the very, very uh, north end of it. Um, it's it, it, it's supposed to be instead of a bunch of freeways at the outer margin of the city. Um, so, so anyway, this is why I did this. And because it was a subway crayon, I did things like dealing with Yonkers. So this is why this little strip is here. Um, so again, not the prettiest, but I believe it's the same style um, or similar enough style at any rate. I mean, not quite the same, but similar in, uh, maybe not in the background color, but in the everything else color, the, the color of the freeways and so on. Um, and uh, so this is, so we can use this if people really want to see what I think about Yonkers, but, um, but we can move it around. So this is probably a better base. Um, so let's get rid of this. And let's start with a new file. So let's call this New York um, RR. Let's call it every, everything I do is NY, so NYR, NYC, RR. Okay. Um, I'm going to possibly refer to this version before, but I'm going to actually delete everything except for, but I'm going to, st not everything, I'm going to delete a lot of things. Um, 
let's delete all the text for a moment. Um, and let, let's, so, oh, no, this is the one thing I want to keep, the, the base map, yeah. Um, but I don't want to, but I don't want to delete all of the stations. So this is why I'm doing these kind of weird ersatz deletions. So, oh. Okay, and um, this is still a crayon, it's just a crayon that's unlabeled. Um, but, um, okay, let's try, nope. Um, let's try to level the colors for now, we can restore them later. So, why are you doing this? Okay, select same stroke style and level the color. Um, which had some thick lines, rather. And um, let's start, but um, let's, I mean, this is an info. Today. I mean, there's a bunch of info that I don't want to delete, but we're going to go over it in a sec. And, okay, this is a new line. This is a new line. Yeah, so the system is even good at keeping new lines apart from old ones, right? No, not quite, because this is... Um, so this all exists, so these lines currently feed into here. Um, these lines are info lines, this, um, and So the correct thing to do is to cut this here. Um, so right now I'm literally uncrayoning my own map. Um, right there, click on break apart. Okay. Um, so what needs to be done, first of all, move this here, and then this becomes two. And so this is currently two paths. So path, break apart. Um, and now this path, I can just start deleting things from it. Um, and this is kind of an existing thing. Oh, um, no, it's still... So this is the existing thing, and right now it feeds into this rail yard um, here in Long Island City. Um, Not quite as, yeah, no, I, I think I want to see this. So this is like, this, trust me. And even though these lines are similar, these two lines here are in tunnel. This is on the surface, they don't connect. Um, so this is only on here. Uh, and all of these are stops that don't access right now. Um, so this is a thing that exists. These lines don't exist, but are infilled. Uh, this is the Empire connection, it does not exist. Um, but I'm going to restore it because it's an existing line that is not current. So here's the thing about New York, okay? Before I start, um, this, these tracks exist, but are not in service. Um, these tracks exist, but um, and are in service, but are barely used and serve very low density suburbia. Um, and what's the last thing? Oh, right, the east side axis. So east side axis I'm going to keep because it's under construction and will be finished eventually. But uh, let's do the same thing. Path, break apart. Oh, and it's still in the middle. Okay, so we're going to also break it apart at Hoboken. Oh, well, this is Hoboken on the surface. Um, just do things, path, break apart. So now we have a thing that's just a tunnel that's just going to get deleted. And let, let's pretend the station markers aren't there. Um, stations you don't know exist can't hurt you or something. 
Uh, oh, and this is also it's the North Shore branch. It doesn't. I mean, I mean, most of the traffic pre exists, um, but um, it has no service. So the situation of New York today. Oh, oh, and last and not least, most important. Yeah, so there's no gateway. Um, so right now the situation is as follows, and in general when I have a doubled line, it indicates uh, quad track. Um, so right now the situation is, is and I emphasize roughly, uh, the situation is as follows. New York has the Long Island Railroad, where trains go from Penn Station to points east. Um, so this is from Penn Station, and it goes up to, uh, so this is kind of the weird line that doesn't go through Jamaica. It's called the Port Washington branch. Um, this is Jamaica. Um, lots of lines uh, meet there. Um, and there are even lines that go through Jamaica, but not Manhattan. So this is uh, called the Atlantic branch. Uh, the existing stations are not these. So it's this one. It's called Broadway Junction. This is Nostrand. This is uh, um, Flatbush slash Atlantic. Um, but uh, but the stations that I'm putting as info here, um, I think all of them are historic. I don't know how many of them survive, but this one specifically is very interesting because the structure for this, this isn't actually in a tunnel, but the platforms are, um, still exist. I imagine they need refurbishment, but they exist. And this is where um, a line that I'm not depicting, um, which a bunch of Twitter people are going to yell at me over, whether it should be there or not. Many people believe it should be built. It's called the Rockaway Beach Branch. And you can kind of see the right-of-way. Um, so it's a right-of-way that emerged out of the main line. So that's this one. It is a double line, and double line means it's four-track. Um, there might have even been a six-track thing here, I'm not sure. Um, but it would have been it wouldn't have been six-track, unfortunately. Um, so just before the station far still, so this used to be a station called Regal Park. Um, the tracks diverged, and you can kind of see the park um, on the remains. Oh, hi, Huli. Um, so you can see the tracks going like this, um, and it continues like this. Um, and the point is that this station was built specifically at the intersection. So this was actually a junction station. Uh, now, you might notice that kind of where I'm vaguely pointing at there's no stop on the subway because the subway was never built for compatibility with regional rail, unfortunately. So we have Woodhaven, you have one on fourth. Consolidating them into one intermediate stop is possible. It's elevated, not underground, but Woodhaven is actually an important stop. It's kind of an annoying branch. It is just too far from Woodhaven to share stops. Um, this map still doesn't have this, but you can see more easily. Oh, let's call this. Um, so you can see more easily, maybe, that there's this contiguous right-of-way. And you can even see, so again, it's between two subway stations, because the subway was not built for regional rail compatibility, unfortunately. And, but the, the, the LRR was, to some extent, built for compatibility with itself. So the Woodhaven station was actually built here and not at the intersection with, uh, with, the Woodha with um, Woodhaven Boulevard. Um, which is the main commercial um, drag. So one of the problems is that uh, one of the problems is that um, unlike a bunch of other lines uh, that are regional rail lines but still have some extent or reusable stations, the Rockaway Beach Branch, and this is why I am very bearish on it, the Rockaway Beach Branch uh, is kind of poor for development. So um, so so development. I mean, so there is development near it, like in Regal Park, for example. But in Regal Park, first, first of all, that's the main line. And second, you probably don't want to build a station there. You want this to be an express uh, parallel thing. So yeah, there's already a local train here. Um, and you can see that there is some density here, but it's not a lot of density. The, um, so you can zoom in. You can see that these are attached row houses. This is... What would be called very dense in a random sunbelt American city, but this is New York City. This is not very dense. Um, and something very important. Um, yes, you're seeing a chord. Yes, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. 
So um, you can, for example, have an intermediate stop somewhere around here, but Metrop so Metropolitan Avenue, don't get me wrong, it's, a, it's an important street, it, it runs buses, I think it should be running more buses, but um, the New York City standard, it's not that dense. And the, so yeah, there are, there's a parking lot here that you could redevelop, there's a parking lot here that you could redevelop, but in general, you should probably not chase parking lots, or you should chase where there's already dense development. If the line happens to also pass near parking lots, then yes, you redevelop the parking lots, but you don't build a line through parking lots saying, oh, we'll redevelop now. That's, I mean, so maybe in European cities, it's actually easier to redevelop politically, but in New York, I don't think it's actually easier to redevelop a parking lot that all of the neighborhood notables who like driving use than it is to redevelop a small residential building. Remember in Berlin, for example, at least in the inner, this is, so this is kind of outer New York and maybe in the outer parts of Berlin, this is more of a thing, but certainly in the inner parts of Berlin, which is where the demand for housing is, nobody clamors to live in Marzahn. Barely anyone even wants to live in Lichtenberg, which is literally two stops out of the ring um, of Aspen. Um, so it, in, in the desirable parts of Berlin, you don't see this. You see parks, um, some of which are useful as parks, some of which are just random asphalt, like Tempelhof. Um, and you see disused rail yards and factories, for there's been a lot of deindustrialization here. But um, you see a few parking lots. Um, but they're not as important to the neighborhood or something. And but um, but you also not see small buildings like this. Not in the inner parts of Berlin. You will see in Berlin more uniform more uniformity of density. It's five six stories usually. Again, they're smaller and larger things. But 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 it's more uniform here or in kind of let's call it the average European city. You know, Berlin's your Amsterdam's your Paris's your Stockholm's um, your Milan's. Um, so, um, so in New York, you have smaller buildings you can redevelop. There's intense nimbyism, but there's going to be equally intense nimbyism about the parking lot. I don't like the parking lot is an inherently easily redevelopable, redevelopable site. Um, and you kind of see, I mean, yes, there's density, but not that much density. And, um, and density, this is really important. Density is relative. What does this mean that density is relative? It means that the choice of where to build a station should be based on relative density, because what does it mean to build a station um, for a bus or a train? And the vast, vast, vast majority of buses and, and, and trains that you will ever want to run or ever want to ride are ones that are um, all vehicles make all stops. Um, very rarely is it appropriate to have um, rapid service, this is not one of these cases. Um, so when you put a stop, when you, when, you put st when you put a station somewhere, what you're saying is, I'm going to build a facility that lets people get on my bus or train here um, at the expense of delaying all through riders. So you don't want stations too closely spaced because then you're delaying too many through riders. You don't want them too sparsely spaced because um, then you're only helping through riders and you're missing so much local ridership. So there is a compromise. So th th there are formulas for this. I actually wrote the, one of them. So uh, my pedestrian observations formula plus stop spacing, maybe, or interstation. Um, let me see if I actually wrote down the exact. Formula, yeah. So you can see some of the formulas here, um, and um, so, so again, you can mathematically optimize this. Um, yeah, okay. This is the uh, the easier formula, the one that doesn't use variable names like it's a math paper. And um, so um, this is so. So I'm not incorporating density too much into these formulas. Um, which, by the way, these are written as bus formulas, but you can e equally use them for trains. You'll just need to know that the stop penalty is different and the average trip distance is different. Um, yeah, exactly. It's a question of priorities. Um, so you don't want to build... So you, you don't want to build stops 
if the, if the density is low by the standards of the line. Now, bear in mind, this is entirely a, I won't say weak line, I mean, it's a New York weak line, okay, or maybe Berlin weak line. I mean, and, um, and, and if you live in Atlanta, I mean, you you should be salivating over the standard land use. Um, in Atlanta, I mean, you and you can go a lot more dispersed, um, lower density than Atlanta. Uh, I mean, Atlanta is a very large city for all. Um, and I guess to the point that it's even kind of a weak line because it's not like metropolitan is an unusually weak spot, so you will just express through it. No, I mean, all of the, I mean, if you're building a line with this, yeah, you would stop with metropolitan. Yeah, you would stop with the intersection with the, um, with this line. Uh, it's called the Montauk branch, uh, lower Montauk. So if you look at this map, um, this, one of the things that stub ends right outside Manhattan, it's called the Montauk branch. Um, because the, it, so the LIR was created from a bunch of different, uh, sources. So the original one goes, whoop. Um, and then kind of the main line as it's been referred to Manhattan goes, whoop. Um, and there was something called the South Side Railway, um, which is the Montauk branch essentially. So it's, oh, the Montauk line rather. So it goes, whoop. then it goes South Side. So there are th two options. This is called the Atlantic branch. This is called Montauk. And then on Montauk, it keeps going east, and uh, and, and it's truncated on open uh, on on an, an escape, but it goes very far out. So this is called the Babylon branch, which is the kind of lower part of the Montauk branch, um, up to Babylon, it's electrified and very busy. And then past Babylon, it's unelectrified and less busy, but it keeps going all the way to Montauk, which is here, um, in like past the Hamptons. Um, and effectively, at, at this point, it's not even commuter rail. It's, it's run as if it's commuter rail, but it, it's at this point o almost like a tourist excursion rail, and they're even uh, running extra express service from New York to the Hamptons um, during the uh, during the summer travel season, um, time for weekends and such, um, because there's not a lot of commuting happening here. Like people live. I mean, I'm sure there exist people who commute Hamptons. Manhattan, but not a lot, and usually people who live in the Hamptons are townies uh, working in the local tourism industry. Um, so they still serve New Yorkers, but they serve New Yorkers locally, not in Manhattan. Um, so the point is, all of these are not very high density, and this is why I don't think Rockaway Beach is a huge priority, and this is why my maps tend to omit this, and I emphasize tend. It's not a terrible line, again. I think it's New York week. Um, so first of all, New York right again is Atlanta very strong. And Stockland, um, the, the point is that once this is built, remember I said something before about four tracks and six, and six tracks. Um, so you, you, so New York has six tracks up until this junction, and this is, and these two tracks, the Port Washington branch, are very busy. So you can't um, incur in that too much, um, especially once you're um, create, once you're taking the Northeast Corridor. So this is the Northeast Corridor. Um, it is this line here. It does not currently run any trains um, that are commuter trains. So it does run Amtrak. It does not. Um, there, there's a plan called Penn Station Access that will be opening soon, but I don't remember how soon um, to run commuter trains on it. Um, the plan is not very good, and the cost is very high, but it's going to happen. I mean, very well to the project. It's actually. Um, an example of how powerful people don't understand how to use their power um, for purposes that are not incredibly petty. Um, the uh, Rockaway, so it's not the Rockaway Beach, the uh, um, Penn Station Access is entering. So again, I'm portraying tracks roughly as they are. So um, Penn Station Access merges into these tracks. So you see that there are, um, so this is two lines entering Manhattan. So there are four tracks. This is how it is today. Um, this is six merging down to four, and East Side Access will restore six, but um, that's also under construction, not existing. And um, the LRR believes that the slots in the trains here are its uh, um, are its own by right. It doesn't even use the entire capacity. Um, I believe it's 37 trains uh, entering Manhattan at rush hour in the in the peak hour, eight or nine in the morning, and then maybe a few more Amtraks. 
I believe it's about 40 overall enter, or maybe 41, it depends on the schedule. The, the, the schedules are fidgeted with a lot. Um, all of this is pre-core running, by the way. Um, but, um, and the capacity should be about 48, so 40 is less than 48. But the LRR still opposed Penn Station access on the grounds that it might lead to congestion for Long Island. Um, and this was viewed as intractable, as something that would make it really hard to run service, and that you should not even build this until East Side access opened, and even then maybe there wouldn't be enough. And there was all this hand wringing, and then, uh, but it was a priority for Cuomo. Uh, he fired the head of the LIRR, Helena Williams, who was against Penn Station access openly, and the Long Island Rail and the Long Islanders just shut up afterward. Um, and this includes powerful legislators that were against everything. So, uh, and Cuomo could not even fire. So, um, so, so Penn Station X is going to happen, but um, but there's going to be a little bit of crowding. And my um, and my argument is that even as you add more tracks, for example, East Side Access, um, the, the density, for example, here, you should probably add more service to um, the Port Washington line. So these are uh, three infill stations. None of these exist. The stations go Penn Station, uh, this is Info, um, sunny, um, not Sunnyside, this is Sunnyside Info, uh, Woodside, um, Matt Stadium, and then a bunch of outer urban and suburban stops, so Flushing, and then all the way up to uh, Great Neck um, and Port Washington. Uh, now, in the suburbs, the density is not very high, but in, but in not the suburbs, the density is very high. Flushing is a really important uh, commercial district, and not just commercial. So it's, it's not. So in terms of job counts, Flushing is not Long Island City, and it's not downtown Brooklyn. But it's a really important ethnic business district. So it's kind of the, so, so it's probably the most important, or maybe the second most important uh, Chinatown in the city. So there's a historic Chinatown in Manhattan, um, which likewise is a really important ethnic business district. So if you, if you count jobs, it's not a lot. Because the offices don't go here. Um, if you're a if you're a Chinese New Yorker and you work in an office, you work in Lower Manhattan, or in Midtown, or maybe possibly one of the secondary ones like uh, downtown Brooklyn, Long Island City, and so on. Um, but uh, so in terms of job counts, Chinatown is not is not here especially strong. But then if you're a Chinese New Yorker and you want to do shopping, um, and, and you have maybe different consumption patterns from white or black or Hispanic New Yorkers, you want an Asian supermarket, right? You, you want a supermarket that sells the, the brands you, you know, maybe from home because you're an immigrant, maybe from home because you're second generation and your parents um, uh, fed that to you when you were growing up, uh, your, your parents would be, uh, your, your immigrant parents. Um, and um, so, uh, and, and likewise for other foods, they're not food. So, um, where um, is the largest variety of these things? It's in the historic ethnic neighborhoods, so that would be Chinatown um, and uh, Flushing, which is, again, at this point might be bigger, I'm not sure, but Chinatown and Flushing are probably the two most important Chinatowns in the city. Um, number three is, uh, by the way, uh, Santa Park. Um, and I remember I mentioned before that there were Jitneys um, in Jersey. Um, there were Jitneys in Jersey that market in Spanish to the uh, uh, to to the uh, Hispanic community in, in this area that I just do not remember the origins of. I believe again it's Cubans and Colombians. Um, so likewise, there are um, there are actually vans, not minibuses, vans uh, that that are basically the Chinese. The kind of like there there used to be Chinatown buses between New York Chinatown and Boston Chinatown until there were more middle-class alternatives and then the state just cracked down on the Chinatown buses. Um, and uh, so likewise, there are this kind of internal, I want to call them Chinatown buses, so, but it's not Funghua, which was an intercity service. This is These are city buses that just go express between uh, the historic Chinatown, um, Flushing, and uh, Sunset Park. Um, and uh, the... Uh, so this is a, a very busy place. Um, the subway station, Flushing, um, before Corona, it was, I believe, the busiest subway station in New York outside Manhattan. 
So it was actually busier than, for example, the two Jamaica stops, because Jamaica has two stops. There's the there's Jamaica Sutton, which is for the LRR connections and the JFK connection, and maybe the local connection. And there's Jamaica Center, which is one stop further out for the bus connections to avoid overloading one point. So these together are busier than uh, flushing, but um, each alone is less busy. Um, the main uh, transfer point in the middle of Queens is between the 7 and the uh, FMR um, on the QB line. Uh, this is an incredibly busy stop. Um, uh, Jackson High. So, uh, so in the same way that uh, selecting is a really important Chinese um, and Korean uh, ethnic center, Jackson Heights is a really important Indian one. And um, I uh, will travel about my favorite Indian restaurant in this neighborhood. Uh, this is where I go for Indian food in the city. Um, and um, so this is also a really busy stop, but flushing is busier. Um, the central, the, the secondary central business district stops in Long Island City are very busy, as are the ones in downtown Brooklyn, but it's kind of more distributed. So there are a lot of downtown Brooklyn stops. You can, you can see all of these M's, and each M is, a, a, almost each M is a different stop. So this is DCAB. It's, it's the only, this is DCAB. Nothing else is DCAB. So this is Nevins. It's a separate stop. This is these are a bunch of stops that are the same ones. So it's called. It used to be called Atlantic Pacific. They've renamed it to Atlantic Parkways. Um. So so these are three parts of the stations, but one station it's all connected. Um. Hoyt Skermerhorn, Plain Hoyt, uh, J Street Metro Tech. It's, it used to be two different stops, and then they built a transfer between them. This is Court. This is Borough Hall Court Street. All the same one. Uh, by the way, um, all of these stops, uh, it's not clear on this map, but if you look at a subway map, at an official one, the lines basically never um, have transfers uh, between them uh, due to poor planning in the 1920s and 30s. Um, and all of these stops, again, together they're busier than flushing. This is, again, this is a giant central bus district. I mean, you can, I, I mean, this is more skyscrapers than a, than a European city. Um, there are, I don't know how many jobs. It's always a problem to count jobs in downtown Brooklyn because um, the main job count tool is called on the map. Um, counts. Uh, it, it's somehow based on the on I think uh, on establishment surveys, I believe, and uh, lots and lots and lots of public sector jobs in New York City um, are deemed to technically be at Borough Hall in Brooklyn or in City Hall in Manhattan, and Borough Hall in Brooklyn is. I mean, lots of jobs are, are there, but pretend that there are, I think, maybe 100,000 jobs where they're in reality maybe 60,000. Um, but still, very big business district, lots of jobs. Um, same thing with Long Island City. Um, but again, Flushing as an individual station is busier. So very little of that is on the LIRR. Um, we're going to get into why in a little bit. But, um, but this is a really important line. Uh, so the, so there should, uh, with better service, be much more demand for commuter rail service in this area. Um, and so when you have more capacity, yes, you should use it for Penn Station access as well. This is very important. But you should use it for things like better service to this part of Queens, maybe better service to this part of Queens, um, and the inner suburbs, which are relatively dense. I mean, suburb dense, not city dense, but still. Um, so these would be things like Garden City. Um, this is, again, this is not a line that exists, but it used to, and um, right of way is still there, and it should be reactivated. Um, East Garden City is the uh, biggest job center on Long Island. So, so the biggest job centers on Long Island are East Garden City and Mineola. Um, there's very little reverse commuting to Mineola, which, unlike East Garden City, exists as a stop. Again, we'll get to all of this in a little bit. But I'm just describing the current situation and just why I'm not doing certain things. So the point is that all of these are more important destinations, to be honest, than um, uh, than the Rockaway Beach branch. Um, so um, the so again, it's not a terrible line. I just think it's competing for capacity with lines that might be more important. Uh, largest of Long Island, uh, okay, the cart. Um, Long Island in New York City English does not ever include the city. So when 
so the geographical island called Long Island includes Brooklyn, Queens, um, Nassau County, and Suffolk County. Um, in New York, when you say Long Island, you never mean geographic Long Island. You mean Long Island excluding the city. So JFK, the airport, you see that it is not in how New Yorkers think of it on Long Island. Um, Flushing, not on Long Island. Long Island City, even though it's called Long Island City and has Long Island in the name, this is not Long Island. This is Queens. This is the city. Um, so the largest on the geographic Long Island is either Long Island City or downtown Brooklyn. Again, it's hard to compare them because the main because they're very close and the tool and the main tool for that um, ha clearly outputs a wrong number in downtown Brooklyn. And then and then it's a question of how to impute. And it's very close. Okay, I'm gonna read the things that people. Okay, so. Okay, you were talking about a chord from Rockaway to Atlantic. Yes, that existed. So um, this is, uh, so by the way, there's subway service over the outer part of uh, the Rockaway Beach branch. Um, it was kind of inactive um, by the 50s. So the city bought it for the, trans for the for subway service and it runs rather slow subway service from the Rockaways. Um, most of these stops are some of the least busy in the city. So not far Rockaway itself, which is below average, but I think ranked something like... So it's hard to find it right now because they revamped the website, the MTA, but they used to have an exact ranking for every subway stop. Um, very easy to find. Far Rockaway, I believe, was 290 out of 460 or something like that. But most of these are literally 400 something. Or 460 something. So things like Broad Channel, people live there, but not many. I mean, this is not even that dense by. I mean, I mean I'm sure by Atlanta standards it's very dense, but by the standard of a city that is not New York, that is not Sun Belt, it is not very dense. And uh, you kind of see they uh, have pools, they uh, own cars. They probably are not commuting to Manhattan because why would you live here if you're commuting to Manhattan? Um, and so they, they just drive. So there's very little ridership here. There's very little ridership, especially on this part, the Rockaway Beach Branch. Um, it's mostly, I think, used not so much as a commuter destination, but as um, a beach destination for people who live in the city and want to take the subway to the beach, um, which I did exactly once in my life in the summer 2007. Um, so, the, so there's not a lot of ridership here. Um, more than all the other than all the other hours, still the subway, but still, not, kind of weak. Um, and you can kind of see that this used to be connected from multiple places. So yes, there was a curve from the main line, but um, this is the remnants of a curve from the Montauk line, from Lower Montauk. Um, and, and Atlantic, um, you can likewise see this curve. Um, now this curve has been entirely been taken over for school bus parking. Um, and there's been a lot of right-of-way intrusion. Um, so a lot of houses just built extensions or parking lots onto the right-of-way. Um, and they actually have legal right to it. There's uh, some, So there are various laws that let squatters have title to property that they've occupied for enough time. The American law on this is one of the harshest towards squatters. Um, you need, um, it's called adverse possession. I believe you need 25 years in New York. Uh, and you need 25 years in which you're possessing the property and not showing any signs that you recognize another person's title to it. So for example, if um, you pay rent to a landlord for part of it, that voids the 25 year clock or, or it restarts 25 year clock until you stop paying rent. Because if you pay rent, it means you recognize someone else's title, but these people never paid rent. The city or the, I think it was, it's the city that owns right away, never tried to uh, exercise its property rights in this. So much of it is, Private, although, I mean, private, but not used so intensively that eminent domain is impossible. Um, so again, it's possible to build this. I just don't think this is useful, um, or I don't think it's especially useful. Um, um, and anyway, um, so this is the probably most glaring omission for area rail fans. It's something that is obviously existing as a rail brand on a map is not online. 
Um, there's also Triber or Arax, the thing that I mentioned before. There are people who think it should be Chromira. I don't think they're correct. I think this needs to be viewed as a subway line. Um, maybe you can ride Chromira or Rolling Stock or something, but I don't. But even if you do, I mean, the stop space thing, the connections to other lines should be subway like, so isolated, uh, very frequent stops. Um, remember, uh, uh, let me see if it's still online. Yeah. So I'm talking about stop spacing and, and optimal stop spacing here. Um, note something in this formula. Average trip distance. Commuter rail um, is something that you use to get from suburban areas or urban areas to the city or city center. Now, it doesn't need to be as extremely suburban as it is in the United States, but I mean, how do you use the Berlin S-Bahn? For the most part, you use it for urban service. The destinations within Berlin lie, um, lie on or within the ring. Um, so there is short ridership, right? There are short trips, so trips that terminate before the ring. They even get somewhat of a discount. Um, but um, for the most part, people use the S-Bahn to get into a broad city center. So the ring, so the Berlin ring, and everything within the ring. So uh, let me just do a very, very brief round off. No, not Iran. Uh, Germany. Not the same country as Iran. Um, so the thing here that looks like it's a dog's head is the ring. Um, it's kind of viewed as the limit of city center in Berlin. And so generally um, office uh, sites will locate within the ring. Or if they're outside the ring, they're going to be adjacent to a ring station. Um, so people, again, so again, this is not a tiny five block central business district. It's, uh, I, I think the land area enclosed by this is about comparable to all of Manhattan, maybe. Um, so yeah, so people might use the s bahn to get from you know, various residential neighborhoods to here. Of course, within city center, lots of trips. Um, so trips, I mean, they're, they're a mixture of short and long. But when you have the ring itself in, in Berlin or in New York, uh, the Triborough right-of-way, um, so it's a, you could even see the right-of-way on, on Google Maps, on Google Earth, it's like this. How do you use the circumferential line? Well, let, let's look at Triborough specifically, okay? Um, you're not using it to get from far away to a business district because there are no business districts on this. Okay, the business districts are Manhattan, so not here. Um, downtown Brooklyn, uh, um, Long Island City, so not here. Um, now, there are many destinations on this, don't get me wrong. Um, so Jackson Heights, remember we were talking about it before? Um, the Triborough Line actually passes very close to the Jackson Heights subway stop, and it should definitely connect to it. Um, so, very important ethnic business district again. But, um, but first of all, you can even see on a map, this is not an actual office district. This is New York City. This is not Berlin. You can see, uh, I mean, they look different on satellite because office buildings like being tall. Again, in Berlin, it's somewhat different. Um, but this is not Berlin. Um, uh, we're not about to be run by, this is not a city that's about to be run by someone who, I want to say someone who plagiarized her thesis and uh, got her PhD thesis stripped, but I don't think PFI is actually going to uh, win the election because I think the Greens are going to get more votes than SPD. But, so not run by that person, um, but potentially run by someone who literally says who that he's going to carry a gun as mayor. So again, different city, different social problems. Um, and uh, what else? Um, the Bronx, so, so we're, when we, so this is, again, not something like this, but kind of something like this. So Yankee Stadium, very important. I mean, Yankee's really important. The uh, baseball uh, team, kind of the byword for winners, almost to the point that everyone hates them. So they're, they're also a, a byword for a team that everyone hates because they win too often. Um, this area is called the Hub, so some businesses so some businesses within the Bronx. It's a business that's just nowhere near as big as Long Island City or Downtown Brooklyn. Uh, Astoria, I think there are, I mean, it's a residential area, but there are some things here. Um, I also think that Astoria should have a, should, should anchor a uh, subway extension of this line to the airport. So you could use this to 
change to the airport. Um, so the point is that circumferential lines uh, live off of a lot and lot and lot of secondary um, things. And the less isotropic you are, um, so this is more so this is less isotropic. This is more isotropic. This is this is the formula for being perfect isotropy. The more isotropic you are, the uh, less the stop spacing should be. So the stop should be denser if it's more isotropic, because when do you drop a stop? I mean, assuming like assume infinitely many stops, um, you want to drop a stop because the area there is weaker than the rest. Or if you assume no stops, you will add stops in areas that are stronger than the rest. Either way, um, the bigger the distinction between strong and weak areas, the fewer stops there should be because you just put stops in the strongest areas. So if there's a central business district, you stop there, and then everything else has twice, has not twice, has half the importance by definition. Um, this is why this is two versus four, by the way. Um, so if you don't have that, first of all, you're more isotropic. Second, trip distances tend to be shorter because um, if it's a circumferential line, um, if I'm trying to, again, and it's supposed to interface with the subway, so if I'm making very long trips on the circumferential line, maybe I should just take the subway direct. It, it's like, again, the ring in Berlin might be, it might be, even, it might be a cleaner example of this because... Um, the, uh, because there are more lines, because it's a complete ring, there are more lines penetrating it um, at relatively even intervals. So, so Berlin again. Um, if I'm taking the, the ring the entire way, which is likely to happen, it's because I'm being a rail nerd and I want to take the ring the entire way. But if I want to get between, let's say, uh, Ostkreuz, which is where it hits the main east-west S-Bahn line, the Stadtbahn, uh, on the east and Westkreuz, so same thing on the west. I'm never going to take the ring again, I'm, unless I'm trying to be a nerd. I'm just going to take the Stadtbahn. It's more direct. And likewise, between Zidkreuz or, or uh, Schöneberg, which are the two intersection points with the main north-south uh, tunnel, uh, and Gesundbrunnen, which is the other intersection, kind of Dotkreuz or something, I will likewise take the tunnel. Uh, I'd like to take the uh, S bahn trains that use the tunnel. Um, and likewise, for other long arcs, I might take an U-Bahn line, like the like U8 between Hellenstrasse and Gesundbrunnen or something like that. So if I'm riding the ring, I'm not riding the ring for very long. If I'm riding the, so if I'm riding the Stadtbahn, it could be very long because maybe I'm riding from a branch. Let, let's say that um, I live in deep East Berlin. Let's say I live in Marfan. So this is a Marfan song. Or in Hellstorf, it's one of these. I never remember which. Uh, and they literally just, uh, um, and, and they literally just did a rail fan trip there. Um, so maybe I, I live around here in deep East Berlin, and I take the, the train to a job in city center, and it, it's quite a long trip, let's say from Malstorf to uh, um, Hauptbahnhof, it's 16 kilometers, or to Alexanderplatz, um, maybe a little less, it's uh, 13 and a half, and maybe if... I work in City West, so this was the West Berlin business center during division, um, because the main business district in Berlin, first of all, was East, but also was at the wall. So the East kind of consolidated here, the West weren't here. Um, and now they're rebuilding the central business district where it was before the wars around here. So, but let's say I work here. This is 19, but and remember, this is not, this is kind of a squiggly line. So this is about 20 kilometers. So it's a long trip. And this is within the city. But, if I, but I'm never going to take the ring 20 kilometers. The entire length of the ring is 40, and I never have a, re a reason to take um, it half. Uh, or half. I mean, maybe I can take it a third, but maybe I'm taking it for three stops. So the average distance along the ring is just much less. Um, so the stop spacing should be uh, tighter, which it is. The ring is slower than the radio lines because of that. The, the average speed on the S-Bond is 40 kilometers an hour. The ring averages, I believe, 36 because the, so the ring is 36 kilometers and it's an hour. Um, because um, speed is less important than coverage on a line that you're mostly taking for uh, short trips. This is the importance of tri -Borough. This is why tri needs to be operationally viewed as a subway, even if you're using commuter equipment, it doesn't matter. Um, okay, so, oh, you're now, now I'm seeing more question. Um, could I theoretically run it past the mainline elevated to LaGuardia? 
Oh, the oh, you mean the Rockaway Beach Ranch? The answer is yes, but um, I don't think it's a wide enough street that L's are easy. Um, so again, abandoned Berlin. We're no longer in a city where um, people tell me that they are very left wing and they work with their future children, but also I should be careful of Turkish crime. Um, we're in a city where um, people have learned. To first of all, never say black crime. They say sketchy. But second of all, I genuinely think New Yorkers are less racist than Berliners. I don't think Americans are less racist than Germans, but I think New Yorkers are less racist than Berliners. Um, so, um, um, so the main way to get to uh, LaGuardia's junction, I used to believe there should be some kind of subway uh, shuttle here to LaGuardia. I no longer think that just run the, like, like, don't try to get to you, just run the trains to get to fastest to Manhattan. This is where people who, this is where destinations are for airport travelers. The hotels are pretty much all in Manhattan. Manhattan, the ones that aren't, are in Long Island City facing Manhattan, so this line's also good for them. Um, through uh, the stop Queens or Plaza. Um, so Junction is not a very wide street. Um, that is the problem. So I'm zooming in on a random spot in Junction. Um, and let's try to compute building to building width, but you can even kind of see, just by counting lanes and seeing how wide the sidewalk is, it's not a very wide street. Um, I'm not even sure it's 30. No, it's not even 30, not even close to 30. This is 20-ish meters. Um, for comparison, the Manhattan avenues are 30 meters. The Manhattan streets are 18. So this is, despite being an important um, cross-town street, an important north-south street through Queens, this is not actually very wide. It's um, the, the part that they checked is only as wide as the Manhattan Street. This looks a little wider, um, but I don't. And again, I don't think it's thirty. This is twenty. It, it should. It would be twenty-four because um, it would be eighty feet. So even this is maybe like Lex Avenue or Madison Avenue in Manhattan, which are which don't even have. Uh, so Lex has a four-track subway, but it's not actually four tracks all side by side in uh, Manhattan under Lex. Therefore, side by side, when they run under the wider park, avenue farther south, but from 42nd north or north of 42nd, the way they, the the way it works is um, it's stacked two over two. Um, so this is not a wide street. So an L here. I mean, I don't say it. I mean, and I'm not even saying this out of uh, out of saying that NIMBYs will oppose it. They always will. The NIMBYs will even oppose the subway. I mean, NIMBYs got an NIMBY. But it's something that's generally not a very good spot for an owl. And again, can you subway? Yes, absolutely. Um, and then you'd even probably have to build some kind of infill at Rigo Park on the LRR, whatever. Um, it's just, why? Why would you do that? I mean, people who travel through LaGuardia, if they don't, if they're traveling to the city, so if they're, so if they're tourists visiting the city, um, their the destination is always going to be Manhattan, if not because they can't afford a hotel in Manhattan, Long Island City. Um, so this line is useful for them. New Yorkers who travel out of LaGuardia disproportionately live in Manhattan. Um, let me. Uh, so this. Okay. This is the map that they keep, and I'm going to post this in the chat. So, um, origin, and, and, and I think this is even for New Yorkers. Um, this is where they live. So it's disproportionately Manhattanites, um, especially Upper East Siders. Um, now, this is employees. Now, employees obviously are not going to be as concentrated on the Upper East. Let me see a little bit, but much of this is not the Upper East, it's East Harlem. Um, so the employees are not concentrated in Manhattan or anything, but Junction isn't as useful for them either. I mean, they, um, so, so employees, the, so, so employees could use Junction, but they would equally be using other things. Um, and, and ultimately, it's not, I mean, the airport is an important destination, but people do reorient where they look for work based on what's available to them. So if you build 
this route, then just more people will move here. Um, and that's fine. Um, or around here between a st between the high demand part of a story and the airport. Um, so so Junction is not as good of a connector. Um, and, and, or there's L or there's LaGuardia to JFK connections, but I mean, how many people make that connection? So for the most part, anything that you run on Junction, well, people will just want to use it to get to Manhattan. Everything you run around this, people will want to use it to get to Manhattan. So the link between them isn't as important. Um, Okay, so when should infill station... Oh, by the way, it's really interesting that um, Feng Hua started. I did not actually know that. Huh, I did not actually realize that Feng Hua started as a, as a local. I, I thought that it was between... I thought that Feng Hua started as interested. Interesting, I didn't realize. Thanks. Thanks, Project Starter. Um, Borner, when should infill stations have overtaking platforms? Um, it depends on whether... On, on what kind of service you want to run. Um, so... This is the lower Montauk line. Again, it has no service. It's not even electrified. Um, there have been plans to revive service on it. Um, they seemed rather weak when Bloomberg proposed that in his pretense of a campaign in the 2000s. He had this plan in the 2000s and in the 2000s for his third term, which was really unpopular because he changed. There's a term limit saying if you're a New York City mayor, you get two terms and then you're out. Bloomberg had the law changed just for himself to be allowed to run for a third term. Uh, he basically bribed city council for it. This was incredibly unpopular. He said that his expertise is needed to shepherd the city through the Great Recession. Basically just power grabbed. Um, and uh, so all of the really strong challengers who expected him to be termed out and then expected to run in the Democratic primary to replace him, uh, like city council speaker Christine Quinn and, member, and, and congressman uh, Anthony Weiner, uh, they were the, viewed as the two strongest. They actually bowed out because they didn't think they could challenge uh, Bloomberg. And then the person who did challenge him, Bill Thompson, um, who was viewed as basically a piece of paper with the Democrat written on it, um, lost by a very small margin. I think he lost by five percent. Um, and then, but, but by then it was too late for Quinn and Weiner to drop back in. They tried to run in 2013 and then de Blasio um, and the de Blasio um, upstaged them. But at any rate, in the 2009 campaign, Bloomberg said, oh, I'm, he didn't say status quo with the city is great. It was a great reason. He said, help Bloomberg with his plan to reform the MTA. The MTA is a state agency. Um, now, again, bear in mind, 2009, so this is before Andrew Cuomo. So at the time, the state government doesn't actively hate on the city the way it does now. But still, it's a state agency. He had this plan with a bunch of big ideas, some some good, some mostly bad. So things like three cross down bus service, um, and one of them was to revive the Montauk line um, as DMUs because electrification is apparently impossible. Never mind that the LRR literally did that in the 70s and early 80s. Um, I think early 80s. I know 70s for sure. Um, when, they, when they were extending electrification to the current end, so that would be wrong. Um, and, uh, and again, it, it was kind of dopey at the time. I still think that if you do it, you probably want to do it as part of a tunnel to Manhattan. But even if you don't, um, it's stronger now than it was back then because Long Island City is growing as a business district. It would have been really nice if Amazon had been allowed to build HQ2, which would have been around here. So decently close to the Long Island State Journal, um, which actually wrote in, a, in, a, in, in, a, in an article about it when it was proposed before it was scuttled. It's really good for, um, based on how the city transit connects with Long Island, not Long Island, with Long Island City. Um, so, on, so on this line, at any rate, again, it's a useful line. It's getting more useful, although the connection to Manhattan is probably obligatory still um, with an expensive tunnel. This line should never run express trains because you mostly do it for city service. Why do you mostly do it for city service? So you can see that there are two ways to get from Long Island City to uh, Jamaica. So this is one of them. There's a uh, thing that it is not depicted because trains, I, I, I think one train, so about one train uses this a day, and I think maybe a handful more use this and not instead of going to Manhattan, uh, stay on the surface on Hunter's Point Avenue and then the station. 
on the surface. Um, nobody uses it. I mean, why would you when you have Manhattan um, on, on the same line? It's not even difficult the way it is over here because here's the rubber iron, here there is. Um, but you can kind of but you can kind of tell that this line, the main line, is better for this. It's it's not any more secure. I think the distance is about the same if this were a tunnel. It's straighter. Um, it is closely paralleled by the subway. You can see the subway stops on the open uh, street maps uh, layer. And this allows the line to run more express because the subway takes care of local service. That's why I'm saying that there should not be a Rego Park stop on the LIRR because there's already a local stop on uh, uh, Rego Park. It's not even an express stop on the subway. The subway runs... Um, the subway runs, what, the Jamaica stop, Jamaica Van Wick, and, or the F and then Brian Kew Gardens, maybe 75th. Um, the F usually, the F always stops or the E usually doesn't. Then Forest Hills, then you run very express from Forest Hills to uh, Jackson Heights, and then from Jackson Heights, you run very express to either Queens Plaza or you're the F and then you divert to Queensbridge, and uh, either way, you just enter Manhattan. So, um, but there are also local trains. The local trains are actually less busy. I mean, people prefer express trains. So the point is that this line is already much more express. So express riders would just use this line. So who, whomst, whatever, uses the Lower Montauk line? People who live on Lower Montauk. I mean, you can maybe connect it to a further line, which is what I do here. Um, you could kind of see that the map says that Lower Montauk stays Montauk um, and can go to either. Um, so, um, so maybe it's not a good idea to connect it with uh, the Babylon branch because it's more exp because it's longer, so it should be more express. But certainly, the West Hempstead branch is a good connection. Um, so these are not very far away lines, so skipping stops there is not really important. It's mostly, again, to some extent for, for suburban solutions, mostly about city riders at these stops um, to connect them better with Long Island City and, as always, the most important part, Midtown Manhattan. Um, so this should not have any faster tracks, just two tracks back and forth. Again, back and forth, it shouldn't terminate here. It should be the tunnel that we're going to restore, but still. So it occurs to me now that my computer was somehow unplugged, um, that everyone can see my shame, but it is now back. Um, so, more questions. Um, so, the chord, okay, so, yeah, so what was it before? Um, have I looked into how hard it would be to build platforms? Uh, yes, they have. Um, so we're talking about infill stops at this point, I guess. So kind of. So, so the point is, you have again, Long Island, uh, the LRR with a bunch of outside terminals, and then four tracks to Penn Station, New Jersey Transit. These uh, trains don't exist. There are plans to resuscitate them. Uh, this at least, um, but the rest exist. Um, and uh, the, and some of them funnel to Penn Station through a two-track tunnel, which is the busiest in North America. There aren't even that many in Europe that are busier. There are some, but not many. It's uh, 24 to 25 trains entering Manhattan at the peak. And uh, Metro North, which is at this point just these two. Again, this is under construction Penn Station access. This is proposed, but not under construction Penn Station access the other way. Um, and there's an unelectrified segment here that, as usual, because America, they're not even planning to electrify. They think they should run diesel trains um, with, with dual mode capability. For some stupid reason, so and and so it's mostly so Metro North at least all goes to Manhattan. These sometimes don't do, and sometimes don't. Now, Penn Station access has four stops, um, built at inordinately high expense. I believe maybe a hundred million or hundred fifty million. These are. Co-op City. Um, I'm not going to remember all of their names, um, which is slightly embarrassing. I should remember. So Co-op City, Morris Park, Park Dester, Hunts Point. So four stops. 
Co-op City. Um, it's not actually Co-op City. Co-op City is this. It's a giant housing project. Um, targeting the middle class, but at this point it's more lower middle class. Um, it's called Bay Plaza, so can I, so bus connection to Co-op City. Um, now you might ask, is it possible to string a train there? Maybe not a mainline train, because I'm worried about capacity on the Northeast Corridor, but a subway, absolutely, this is in my subway crown. Um, the six train terminates here, just... Um, then Mars Park. Um, this is, I think, pretty close to uh, the Albert Einstein School of Medicine, so the, um, the one of the medicals in New York. Um, this is Park Chester. No, it's not Park Chester, what am I saying? Um, did I just... No, this is Park Chester, I'm just being wrong. So Park Chester is this area, so it's uh, rather dense, it's part of the, um, of the Bronx. Um, and Hunts Point, likewise. Um, there are actually a lot of industrial jobs around here. Um, so this is one of the few remaining manufacturing job clusters. It's, I think, mostly warehousing at this point. Maybe meatpacking, I'm not sure. Um, so, th so this is, for example, uh, so this route is uh, one of the stronger, not the stronger, but one of the stronger bus routes in the Bronx. Uh, loops like this. Uh, oh, it's NYC Produce Terminal, yeah. So, wrong on what kind of food, but food, they're having. Um, and uh, this stop, um, just Pelham Parkway, this is just me adding another infill stop that I think should be built. Now, important, you're asked about um, whether there should be a mixture of, uh, whether there should be bypass tracks on this. Absolutely, there are inter the, this is, there are intercity trains here. Um, so, most of this should eventually be four-tracked. Um, depends on how much service you want to run, maybe not initially, but... If you're trying to run more than a turning for 15 minutes um, on here, which you should, you absolutely have to have four tracks. Um, and um, like within the Bronx, I mean, you can have short, ideally stationless or almost stationless segments with track sharing. Um, so for example, between Co-op City and New Rochelle, you don't need to four track because it's stationless and you can just schedule. Um, this is the old way, by the way, into North Shell. North Shell, uh, so this is called Shell Interlocking. Uh, this is, I keep saying that they should build electronics before concrete in there, because where you absolutely have to build concrete. Um, this is a flat lock run. Incredibly slow, I believe, 30 miles an hour. Um, it's possibly the slowest part of the Northeast Corridor that is not within the city limits of one of the major cities. Yes, just outside New York City, but New York City has white, it has pretty extensive city limits by, say, Boston standards. Um, I think it's maybe even slower than Frankfurt Junction. So it would be the worst slow zone outside a major city terminal. Um, it's that bad, and they need to... And it's also a capacity constraint because it's a flat junction. There's a ton of traffic. Uh, something like 20 Metro North trains per hour on this line entering the city uh, at, uh, at rush hour. Um now, the entering trains go like this, and Amtrak doesn't conflict, but um, first of all, the uh, line is under constant maintenance with tracks out of service, but more importantly, uh, evening peak, um, it would it would conflict as great. Um, so you need to grade separate. This is something that New York needs for regional rail. It's really important. Um, I think that Connecticut might even want to chip in because it speeds up trains in Connecticut a lot. Uh, although New York should be spending this, is, uh, this, is, this is money. This is not. I mean, I keep thinking, oh, this is like twenty million dollars. This is not twenty million dollars. This is I don't know. Based on a New York project, so not normal world cost. New York cost, but existing New York costs. Not let's make up a really high figure because we don't want to build this, and let's siphon so that if uh, if it gets funded, we can siphon all the money to things we really care about. No, actual built New York costs. Harold interlocking. Um, Harold is uh, uh, this. Um, so, uh, how, no, not the side access, I don't think. Uh, it's the Northeast Corridor to, uh, it's the Northeast Corridor to Long Island Um That was about 250, I believe, million dollars. And this is simpler. So this is probably about 150, 200, maybe 250 million. Absolutely worth it. Absolutely worth it for reliability, for time savings, really good for anti really good for um, 
regional rail, really good for local urban rail. Um, so absolutely, you need to do this. Um, but I'm not even, but I'm not depicting the changes in the right of way there. It might be useful to make the trains also faster, so shave a couple of buildings. Um, now, you're asking me about Astoria. Um, this is absolutely a constraint. So in addition, so there should be, in addition to these four at any rate, this Pelham Bay, uh, so this is not Pelham Bay, uh, Pelham Parkway stop, just because it's easier to connect with the buses. So this bus corridor, 207th, Fordham, Pelham Parkway. This is, I think, the second busiest in the city, busiest in the Bronx, the X12. So really useful to connect to it, because again, we're thinking of, this is regional rail, this is suburban rail. But we are thinking of suburban rail as part of an urban rail system. It interfaces with the subway where possible, with the buses where possible. It here crosses the most important bus in the Bronx. Make sure there's a transfer. It's really important. Just as um, here, there's an intersection with the Tremont uh, buses. Uh, so it's the Tremont bus. So there, it's, a, it's kind of a twin right away. So East Tremont and East One ADS, and they kind of slalom around each other. And, um, and then there's a tail going over here. Um, so Park Chester would be the intersection where that's really good. Hunt Point, likewise, there's this really useful uh, bus corridor um, that goes 155th, 161st, 163rd, and then the Hunt Point Terminal. It's really important. Uh, high ridership, so you absolutely want to connect to it where you can. You, so, so this is a north-south line, roughly. So connect to all the east-west buses. This is important. Um, this is why I'm adding a fifth info. And then, again, a story is the hard one. Um, so this is on a grade, so not easy to construct, although possible trains can, I mean, EMUs can stop on these grades, no problem. Um, probably the hardest part is actually not the grade. It's that you need to build platforms, um, and it's not even where it's easiest. So ideally, you want to build platforms on the outside. However, that would be too easy. It's not the line. So first of all, there's this fourth track that no longer exists. It's because it's two Amtrak tracks and a freight track. The freight track is barely used. So you want to move the freight probably to Amtrak or something or um, um, in the off hours or something. Um, two of them go to Triver RX. The other two are Amtrak and Regional Rail. And, uh, and again, freight uses whatever it can at night because there's one freight train a day or, or a no, not one, but a handful of freight trains a day. I mean, you can just run wherever. And the problem is it's not slow, fast, fast, slow with tracks on the, with station on the outside. It's slow, slow, fast, fast. And you probably also want an Astoria stop on the, on Tribro. So you need to extend this because you want to have, um, um, because you want to have platforms, and you can't even have a cross-platform transfer. That would be way too much construction in a very constrained area. But it's something, you, but, but you can again widen this a little bit. But this means that you need to build wings often on top of buildings, which is, by the way, fine. You can build wings. Um, it means you can maybe widen this a little bit in a direction that is less built, like um, in the like going northeast of the line in this area. Um, Southwest as possible, but maybe here. So again, it's annoying, but I emphasize that it's, it's annoying does not mean impossible. And then on the budget that very easy stations are being built in the Bronx, they can do this. Um, and it's important because, first of all, Astoria is not nothing. It's useful to have a second connection from Astoria to uh, Manhattan, in addition to the library. Second connection between the two is not nothing. Um, Especially because the, there's very poor connections on the LIRR, um, on the subway in uh, Long Island City. So they're planning, and, and I'm going to add this to the crown in a little bit. So they are, why is my computer constant? Okay. okay. Um, so they want to build an infill station, not this one, Sunnyside Junction, which is for a side access also, but here called Sunnyside. Um, which is a pretty good station, but it's not quite the transfer you want to um, the other lines. And maybe you can hit Queens Plaza, but Queens Plaza does not go to Astoria. Queens Plaza is the one that goes on the Queens Boulevard line. Queensboro Plaza is farther west, so it's a real schlep. And so this is actually a good connection 
from Long Island City, from Greensboro Plaza, to Regional Rail, to, to the um, to the Penn Station Access Road. Um, this is also a good connection in the future to uh, the airport, um, which absolutely should have these uh, should, should have this um, uh, extension. Not even that hard to build, to be honest. It's just that 25 years ago there were MMBs. Cuomo is a boomer. He lived 25 years in the past. Best. At worst, he lived 40 years in the past. Um, so um, the uh, and, and, and and they say 25 years. By the way, the, the NIMBYs were old even then. So back they were old back when the term boomer did not mean old. The the, the NIMBYs who were against this 25 years ago, they're all in, they're all dead or in Florida. The new inhabitants of Astoria are people who are often middle class domestic migrants, aka the base for using LaGuardia. So um, the system so this is an important stop to the point that like a hundred million dollars for it, I think is acceptable. I don't know how much it will cost, but hundred million it's actually really hard to spend a hundred million dollars on an info stop. New York is capable of that, Connecticut is capable of that, Toronto is capable of that. But for example, Boston and Philadelphia are noobs. They build an infill stop for twenty, maybe. I mean, even less if it's in a if it's a shorter station or if it's a an island platform um, in a really constrained area. Possibly even worse than Astoria. Boston in Newton is building a an infill stop for forty to forty five. So I think this is constructible. Um, Are there any other cities that have competent complete security credentials other than um, Berlin, you mean? Um, it's not very common because there are always little kinks, almost. So, so the ring is very un so, so the ring is unusual, but even the ring. The ring is uh, the ring also is fed by lines that um, run radial and then use part of the ring. Um, it's not that com So the thing is, you're unlikely to build a ring de novo because it's complicated. Um, so you will use infrastructure that you have. It's much more common. And so maybe it's a historic ring. So in Berlin, the ring was historic. The ring was built before any of the other lines. Um, is a bypass around the city. Um, Paris had such a, such a bypass, actually, but uh, it's called, it was called the uh, Petit saint -Tier. But it no longer on service. The metro is built um, in disregard to where it is. So, um, so it's not terribly useful. Um, London had the circle, but the circle has been turned into a spiral because of a lot of uh, track sharing complexity and flat junction complexity, and the other lines have used part of the circle. Um, I mean, Tokyo has the Yamanota line, but the Yamanota line is operationally a ring, but it's not really a ring because it passes through the primary central business district. Um, there's line two in Seoul, which is Yamanota like, so it passes through the primary central business district. There's the Moscow Circle Line, um, but it's much tighter in, in radius. So, again, it does exist. It's just uncommon because usually you need to pre plan everything very carefully to have such a thing, which Moscow did, but it's uncommon. Um, so, the, I mean, it's only done, for example, in Soviet type planning or Soviet influence planning, but only in huge cities, which in the Soviet bloc was just Moscow. Um, but um, you do see parts of it in Shanghai and in Beijing. Um, Beijing actually has two uh, uh, two concentric circles. Beijing has one with a uh, line four, with line three using part of it. Okay. Um, so yeah, don't uh, yeah don't don't condemn. I mean, you don't want to condemn all these buildings. Bear in mind, these are buildings that are near the subway, so they're valuable. Um, yeah, the yeah MTA would pro uh, MTA would probably want to talk about park and rides because they think the commuter rail requires park and ride. Um, and uh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So uh, oh, and the London Overground, yeah, it's kind of a circle, but not complete. Um, Paris is building Metro Line Fifteen, but it's going to have a little kink, so it's going to run it a little bit as a tadpole. Um, with one, uh, it, it, when I say tadpole, I mean something that looks like the number six, but the outer part is only one stop. Um, 
And in uh, Tokyo, they have the Oedo line, which is like that, but with a much longer uh, tadpole tail. So, again, it's a thing that happens, it's just not, it's just, it's a thing that happens, it's a thing that should happen, but often it doesn't happen because of um, contingent circumstances, kind of like how you, when you build a subway system, whenever two lines intersect, there should be a transfer, but in practice, basically everywhere something comes up. Um, in, 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 in almost every major city, there are a handful of mass connections. Some, like New York, have dozens. Berlin only has one between the U-Bahn and the S-Bahn, none internal to the U-Bahn, none internal to the S-Bahn. Berlin has one internal to the metro, uh, more between the metro and the RER. Yeah, 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 uh, Tokyo has a bunch of uh, circumferentials. The only one that's actually an operational circle is Yamanote. Um, Oedo, close, but not quite. Uh, yeah, Musashino Nambu is not a complete circle. It's, uh, um, it's three quarters of a circle or four fifths of a circle, but um, Musashino, uh, sometimes even I think through runs with, uh, um, with Keio into the city. Um, and yeah, and there's the Tobu one. Um, but again, they're all, they're all these little kinks. Um, so at any rate, this is about the infill stops. Um, again, some should have bypass tracks like the ones in the Bronx. Astoria, ideally, but too expensive, just schedule around it. Um, in the very long run, I mean, you, you, in the very long run, there's going to be so much Amtrak traffic. By the time you get, uh, so this is good for six or for four to six Amtrak trains an hour. Now, if the high-speed rail crown that I did in the spring, in the early spring, is built, you need more than that even north of New York, and then just build bypass tunnels just for high-speed rail. Remember. It's easier to build a high-speed rail tunnel than to build a regional rail tunnel because the high-speed rail tunnel doesn't have intermediate stations, and the stations are a big part of the cost. TBMs are a marvelous thing. They will dig you a nice hole from Penn Station up until here. Um, so this is the infill part. Now, I had before there are other problems. A lot of these problems are operational. Um, so, for example, this is a matter of fares. So uh, let's say uh, I live in Flushing. It's not unreasonable. I mean, if I move to if I move to New York City, um, doubt I will live in Flushing. But if, if Flushing is a neighbor that I will look to live in, um, my guess is they will end up in Jackson, in Jackson Heights, but I do not know. Um, but I mean, knowing what my work was going to be if I live in New York, which is um, NYU Marin, knowing what income I'm going to have, I mean, they decently aware of what rents are. Guessing it's going to be maybe Jackson Heights, maybe Harlem. So again, a neighborhood they could live in. Um, so let's say I live in Flushing. Uh, I have two options to get to Manhattan. These are the 7 train and the LIRR. Let, let, let's not do the where the lines and stations are thick. And I say, and imagine when I say thick that it is thick in internet speak, so with double C, not C train. So let's see here. Okay, I can take this, the seven, from Flushing Main Street, flip through this really weirdly squiggly thing just to um, connect to Queensboro Plaza. Uh, it's so squiggly that um, from Queensboro Plaza to Times Square, it's actually faster to do this on the um, uh, on the NQRW than it is to, you know, like this, than to go on the 7 like this. So the point is the 7 is very slow. Now, the 7 being very slow, you might expect some people to be, uh, you might expect some people to be taking the LIRR um, to go to one station faster. But hardly anyone does. The ridership on, remember, ridership out of Flushing Main Street is all of this is performing. The highest of all subway stations outside Manhattan, number I believe 12 in the city. Um, I don't remember the absolute numbers right now. And again, the looking them up has become a little bit more complicated. I believe it's on the order of, I don't know, maybe 15 million a year, maybe. So that would be 50,000 a day. So, so very busy. Or, or 60,000 a day, actually, maybe. So, a, a weekday. So very busy. Um, 
the LIRR, to put things in perspective, the entire LIRR, it's inbound, right? So this is all inbound. Um, and then, then so 60,000 people get on, 60,000 or so get off. The LIRR has, in each direction, about 150,000 riders. So flushing alone is almost is like not much less than half of the entire LIRR combined. Um, and it's not because the LIRR is mostly flushing, it's not. Um, flushing is a footnote. People don't do this. Why do they not do this? Two reasons. First, frequency. Frequency is because, so frequency, the point is that um, commuter rail was never, so American transit in general is not run by people who understand that frequency is endogenous to ridership, or, um, or rather that ridership is endogenous to frequency. They think of ridership as an exogenous thing that you just vary frequency based on how much fixed demand there is. This is incorrect. When frequency is low, people will abscond. When you have two competing lines, one is frequent and one is infrequent, people will just abscond to the frequent one. Not to mention fares. Um, there was never historically any kind of integration um, when it was, so these stations all used to exist. Um, they were charging 25 cents back in the 1910s and 20s to get you from here to Manhattan. The subway was charging 5 cents. Now the subway had problems being profitable by the depression, but the operating costs of the subway were not 25 cents, they were 10. So the subway was just cheaper to um, operate um, and, uh, and was getting more and more uh, efficient at this every year um, until roughly the peak in the 1930s. And um, so the subway was, uh, so people just abandoned the LRR immediately. The LRR's peak ridership year is not, let's say, pre corona, you might expect from growth or um, something about post war suburbanization. Metro North, I believe, actually is at peak ridership. Right? I mean, pre corona, I believe it was at peak ridership ever, like um, from the lines that it sent from. The LRR wasn't. The LRR was rising, but just short of its peak, which was in the 1920s, because the subway was built and just demolished its ridership around here. Um, and as box subway became a thing, ridership was even demolished in Basel. Basel, so Basel, Basel still has more ridership because box subway is a schlap, and these are maybe wealthier people who live in Northeast Queens, so they're okay paying premium fares. Again, it used to be 25 cents versus 5 cents. Now it's, on the subway, was it almost 3 bucks? 275, I think. I, I think I think it's 275, right, because, they, because of the emotional barrier for crossing three. Um, but the LR is a lot more. The LR is I think maybe seven point something. So the fares are very high. The frequency sucks because it's because they never thought that they could just run an urban rail frequency. It was always viewed as you time yourself based on a specific train. You're a nine to five white collar commuter like Tom Draper in the early seasons or Pete Campbell in the late in the later seasons of Mad Men. You sit on the same train. At almost at, at informally assigned seats in the same way that on on Mad Men, I think in season four, four or five, I think I think five. They uh, there's an entire plot line revolving around Pete Campbell sitting with the same people every day on his what is now called Metro North and at the time was called um, New Haven Line, the New Haven Railroad um, between uh, uh, between I think called Cobb and Grand Central. Um, so, the fair, so, so the idea that there should be a frequency that people should just ride spontaneously, that did not exist. They didn't think about it. And they're still stuck in that mentality. So the frequency sucks, and they don't. And, and when they think about raising frequency, they think about a pilot program that is going to maybe introduce hourly frequency. But you're in the middle of the city. Hourly frequency is nothing. The subway runs every five minutes off-peak, I think. I think the subway actually runs every five minutes off-peak. Um, pre corona, yeah. Um, and so, obviously, yeah, okay, so, oh, 1075 peak, 775 off peak, yeah, no, yeah, that's terrible. So, yeah, um, so the fares are not integrated, and remember, if you need to ride the bus to connect to the train, bus subway is on one fare, bus LRR is not. Um, that's actually. Um, or if your final destination is not bus station, um, 
So on the seven, you're just within the subway system, it doesn't even count as a transfer. On the LIRR, that's a subway transfer, you have to pay extra. Um, and so, yeah, the fares suck, the frequency sucks. Whenever people have the option to take subway service or commuter rail service, commuter rail service being faster, in America, they elect to avoid commuter rail. It's here in Flushing. Um, Jamaica, same thing. Even though Jamaica has actually better frequency because so many lines interline. Um, so, Penn Station to Jamaica does not have zero ridership. It has a decent amount of ridership. I mean, I don't remember how much, but um, the, but, but, I, but I would ride it sometimes between Manhattan and JFK um, as a faster alternative to the E. And if I'm spending $300 or, or $400 on a round trip air ticket, I'm not as price sensitive. And frequency, again, is higher because many lines interline. It's also especially um, elevated because for me at least, my use case would be flying to Europe. Um, flights from New York to Europe tend to cluster in a specific range of uh, time zones, uh, sorry, a specific range of times for time zone considerations. So, the, uh, so that actually coincides with the afternoon peak. Um, so it's even more frequent. So the frequency between Jamaica and Penn Station is not terrible, but the fares aren't so regular commuters don't do that. They ride the E. Um, and um, so wherever you have this interface, the ridership on the LRR is low. Far Rockaway, same thing. The, the A is so excruciatingly slow, but more people do that than do it by LRR. Um, same thing um, within the city in the northern margin of the Bronx, Wakefield, very close. Um, the Metro North station and uh, the two station. And again, the Metro North station has rounding error ridership because the subway is more frequent and the subway is cheaper. So what you need to do is integrate the fares. This means um, also reducing operating costs, which are very high on commuter rail because there are um, individual conductors that punch every second. Um, and, uh, and maintenance productivity is also rather low. Um, to the point that, so one of my, so it was asked what New York needs to have regional rail. On the labor side, um, the LARR has seven point something thousand employees and Metro North has six point thousand. I do not know how many New Jersey Transit Commuter Rail operations have. To put things in perspective, the S bonds of Berlin, Frankfurt, let, let's, let's go by, uh, Ridership order: Berlin, Munich, uh, Munich Hamburg, um, Frankfurt, um, and I think Stuttgart or Rhein Ruhr. So that would be Köln, Düsseldorf, Essen. I don't remember if both that would be the top six. Have less than that. So either the top five or the top six in Germany have fewer employees than the LRR, while the Berlin S-Bahn which has, I believe, 2.7 or 2.8 thousand employees, about one third as many as there are, or not much more than that, has more ridership than all American commuter rail combined. Um, so get your labor efficiency in order, which means yeeting the conductors. Um, you need to raise off-peak ridership and raise off-peak frequency to do that. But you do this through more efficiency. So you do this through just running the same schedule all over, um, the LRR could plausibly squeeze almost twice as many, or actually twice as many, service hours out of every driver it has. You wouldn't even need to hire new drivers. Metro North is not as inefficient, but also, but is also rather bad. And um, so, so you need to reduce headcount. This means layoffs. People will complain. Let them complain. Um, the LARR and Metro North under railway labor relations, so management can change the contract when it expires unilaterally, and if the workers don't like it, they can go on strike. Um, when you have five people doing the job of one, you can ride out a strike and just hire strike breakers. Um, New York, New York has a local the Taylor law, which says which says that um, state employees, so, so public sector employees within the state are not allowed to go on strike. Um, and in exchange, management is not allowed to unilaterally change contracts. So if the, so if there's no agreement, the contract um, continues. This is a horrific law. Um, it kind of guarantees industrial peace, except that, first of all, if the workers are underpaid, they can't go on strike um, to, to protest that. 
And uh, if the workers are overpaid, management can't start doing layoffs. So it kind of protects the most overpaid workers and, 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 and screws the most underpaid ones. Um, and the LRR workers are overpaid. They get paid way more than subway workers doing the exact same job. Um, it's also racial. LRR and Metro North workers are almost entirely white. Subway and bus uh, drivers are predominantly not white. Um, and very resentful of this. Uh, not, not resentful that they're not white. I mean, I mean, maybe they're resentful of racism, but they don't feel like they want to like surgery to make their skin look white or something. No, they're resentful that LRR workers and Metro North workers on what is, in theory, one MTA get paid more for the same job. Um, so you need to be very hard on with labor. And remember, labor law for railways is federal. You are allowed to, um, you, you are allowed to dare strike. Um, so you need to reduce operating costs and with them reduce the fares to be um, integrated with the subway. So it means exact same fares as the subway um, for one for, for single trips and for um, and for monthlies. Fare integration is not just the, the so not just the same fares, but also if I change trains, I don't need to pay extra. In the same way that if I change within the subway system in New York, I don't pay extra. If I change from a bus to a subway, I don't pay extra. If I do bus subway bus, I have to pay extra in New York because um, the metro card system does not know how to register this um, without accidentally letting people do infinite chaining. But um, but for example, the but monthlies obviously don't care. So the same monthly should be valuable. Uh, should be not valuable, valid on everything within the city. Um, ideally, also one single um, trip ticket to be val uh, valid within a certain window. Like in Berlin, if I say I'm getting a ticket valid within Berlin, starting at um, let's say 2:30 in the afternoon from I don't know Alexanderplatz or something, then it is valid by whatever mode I want to take within Berlin. Um, as long as Alexanderplatz is my origin is my origin station. They have uh, something that they ask you where you started. I think it's supposed to prevent you from doing a short round trip on a single ride ticket. I've never actually seen uh, uh, ticket inspectors. I've never, I've never actually seen them police that, but I, I don't know. Maybe it's just that nobody, I don't hate about this. Um, so you want fair integration. You want high frequency and not a pilot program where you say, oh, an hour might be really bad. So let's do every... 45 minute clock race schedule. Boston, by the way, the, the, um, so um, with Transit Matters, with our regional rail program, which I will never stop uh, linking to, so it's regionalrail.net. Uh, So we talk about the importance of increasing frequency of doing fare integration. We talk about the social justice implications, um, which are basically the same in Boston and New York. I mean, all of old America, all of old urban America is like this. Um, and uh, so we talk about the fair amount fine, um, which, uh, which is historically the weakest line, even per kilometer, let alone in absolute numbers. It's very short, but it's gotten. I think at this point it's the weakest in absolute numbers, but it's not the weakest per kilometer anymore when they didn't integrate the fares, but they reduced the fares. So the fares at this point are not if you're riding to Fairbound or Reedville, which is wrong, but if you're riding to the interstations, it's the same fare as the subway. It's not fare integrated with, so, so you have to pay a second fare if you connect from a bus or if you connect with the subway, but um, if it's a one seat ride, it's the same fare. Um, the slightly increased frequency to uh, at Russia, at least, to improve ridership, when, which it did. And then they decided not to do it anymore. And then uh, when we yelled them over regional rail and they did the post-corona schedule, they said, oh, well, let's do a clock face timetable for more off-peak riderships uh, to, to uh, uh, take into account the new nature of commuting. And they did um, hourly clock face schedules on a bunch of lines, or almost clock face. You know what uh, What clock face schedules they gave the Fairmount line? train every 45 minutes. So first of all, that's not a clock face. Second of all, if I live in Daunt, and if, if I move to Boston, it's likely that I'm gonna live, that I'm gonna at least try to find an apartment in Daunt, which is, I mean, better food than Cambridge, same line as Cambridge, half the rent. Um, and so if I live around here, my options, let's say that I don't care about fares. Um, so let's say my options are to take a 
train that runs every 45 minutes and which they think is clock face and a train that after horrific budget cuts runs every 13 where am i gonna get on fields corner uh fields corner or four corners geneva um needless to say this is terrible so when you do this kind of government by um pilot oh let's give them 45 minutes all day no shit it's not gonna work you're right next to buses that run every 10 minutes or something off paper, every eight minutes off paper, yeah, they're slow, um, but they run every eight to 10 minutes. And, and, and on the other side, trains run every 13 off peak, and even that is borderline criminal and should be these probably every seven and a half. Um, so um, it's the same thing that's gonna happen in New York if they do it by pilot, to say, oh, okay, let's start to do half hourly. Maybe half hourly will work in Eastern Queens, I don't know, or, or in the inner suburbs, but remember, the frequency in a place like Flushing needs to be competitive with a train that runs every five minutes off peak. Um, ten minutes is the absolute worst you should be even thinking of. Ideally five, but I can get I can get ten, especially given how slow the seven train is. So you should be running every ten minutes off peak on this. And yes, this means eating the conductors. It means running like you're on the subway. And this is a big political problem, by the way. Um, even more so than in Boston, um, where you can do a lot of speed of thermal electrification. In New York, the problem is that Long Islanders like the exclusivity. They, they, you'd say, oh, let's do it like on the subway, and they say, I moved away from the city to avoid the subway. Um, they, so a lot of it is very racial, very racial, very racially stereotyped, or even not, they just hate the city. And again, these are people who are paper tigers. I mean, you tell them, I'm not going to listen to you. What are they going to do? I mean, move to Florida. If they hate the city. If they could have moved to Florida, they would have done so already. Um, so, yeah, a lot of it just involves telling people no, which is really difficult even for a dictator like Cuomo. I might even say, especially for a dictator like Cuomo. Cuomo doesn't think in terms of alternatives, in, ter in terms of ideological alternatives he can choose between. He thinks in terms of everyone says yes. Everyone tells him yes. Whenever his cronies ask him something, he says yes. Um, there's no conflict. Conflict is with weird people who say things like Cuomo killed 60,000 people through Corona and should be removed from office by all means necessary. Um, and, um, and, and, and these people can just be sidelined. I mean, I mean this is how this works to Cuomo. This is why New York is so terrible to cover. And, and so, so you need the high frequency. You absolutely need the high frequency. Um, Again, off peak. I mean, in the peak, you might need to increase frequency by a little bit, only by a little bit. The peak is okay. This is why there's so much inefficiency in rider trading. Not in rider trading, sorry, in, in labor. Um, the drivers get paid something for one round trip a day because it's that or it's split shift. And split shifts are incredibly undesirable. So you have to either pay people extra or pad them by paying people to do nothing. So it's, in, it's um, nothing in between. I think the subway term for this is work as assigned, which is essentially paying people to um, spot in case they are needed, which they almost never are. Um, or um, workers don't like it, so they want to get paid extra, whatever. Just avoid this. Just do very simple schedules, maybe some peak supplement, but even that, ideally, you should not, you should not need to do. Um, so you need. So this is what you need on the operational side. Um, and this trumps everything. This trumps all the colored lines, by far. Every five would run into capacity problems, um, not with east, not with east side access in existence. Um, so with east side access in existence, um, you run, you do this every five at peak, this every ten slots for Amtrak every ten, that exhausts one tunnel, um, then. You really need to build this tunnel that will go over there. Then you have east side access. Um, the what I'm calling orange here. So the Hampstead line is the line where there's a ton of spare capacity until ridership builds up through better off peak. Uh, there's a better reverse peak ridership. I mean, even reverse peak doesn't really fill the train. So I'm saying this should be every five minutes to Hampstead, every five minutes to um, East Garden City and Central Center. But it'll take time to build up. And it requires a lot of transfer and development for that. So, um, um, so 
So at any rate, um, the um, so, so what you need is to just have better operations, first of all. Again, let's remember the Swiss slogan, electronics before concrete, or the German refinement, which I should add, is designed in opposition to a uh, to, to, a, to a S-Bahn tunnel in Munich that I think is actually a good idea. So I think that people who are using a slogan in Germany are incorrect. It's organization before electronics, before concrete. So first of all, when you're this overstaffed, fix the overstaffing, run higher frequency, run fair integration, and then, yeah, ride a triple build below. I mean, people don't want to get stuck on slow, on, on slow incredibly crowded trains. So you essentially, you shift crowding from the subway, which is overcrowded, um, within Queen, not ever, but from Queens to Manhattan rush hour, to the LRR, which is severely undercrowded. Here's a, here's a fun fact for you. The, me, the, the mean LIRR train, not the passenger, the train, entering Manhattan between 8 to 9 in the morning has empty seats. I believe 15% of its seats are empty. They think it's at capacity because maybe some trains have surge capacity, so maybe a few people are standing and they think that, uh, and they think that I'm not paying uh, this amount of money to um, uh, stand on a train even for 10 minutes uh, or something like that. I mean, the train fills up to end, so nobody coming from here would ever stand, or going in the opposite direction, maybe they would stand 10 or 15 minutes and then sit, but they still have this mentality that it's an old first class train, it's an old premium train, they're special people, they're not there to uh, rub elbows with city residents. Um, remember, it's New York, they, they're not going to say black crime, they're going to say sketchy, but this is what they mean. They're just racist, and again, the racist people would have left the region if they could, so just you, you can ignore them. Like, they're, they're a lot weaker than they seem. I mean, people who, I mean, nimbies who bark don't bite. Um, so that is what is required on the, um, so, that is what, so that is what is required on the, um, the um, on the operation side. And then the infill stations are still, just suggest themselves. You can just build, yeah, in places like Broadway for the subway connection or, this is for the Triborough connection. Um, this is uh, this is Junction. Um, um, well, it's Point Flushing. Um, Flushing is on a it's on an info stop, but it would get a lot more ridership if you just have better operation. And then, yeah, people would fill the trains. I mean, the same way that in Munich in the fifties, uh, as the German economic miracle became a thing, and it was especially a thing in southern Germany, which had not industrialized early, unlike uh, the Ruhr or Berlin or Hamburg or Saxony. Um, so it grew very fast. Uh, Munich had rising and rising um, commuter rail ridership, so it built the S bahn. Um, so it just suggests itself. Um, so this is the issue with infill stops. Again, you don't build them where you were running express next to, the, to a local subway, but other lines, yeah, go ahead. And remember, Trains are never going to have to skip stops. So don't try to be fancy with schedules. Just all the trains go make all stops from Penn Station to Great Neck. Maybe some turn there and some continue to uh, Manhattan because it's single track here. Maybe if you really care, which means a lot of double tracking, but we need a lot of TOD, you double track with some amount of domain. So this is what you do to do that. Um, and again, you do the same thing in Hampstead, um, and you also revive this brand. You do West Hampstead, um, which is probably the weakest of them. Um, and then once you do that, you can start doing things like, um, so there are already transfers at Jamaica, but you can do them more regularly. Um, you can, so you do things like Atlantic branch trains uh, going again on the Atlantic branch and staying on the Atlantic branch. And then you start building the connecting tunnels, which is what you do with an s -Bahn. I mean, the whole point of this, of the S-Bahn tunnels or RER tunnels is you take all these terminals that are outside city center, and you connect them with through tunnels. In New York's case, it's maybe more complicated because it requires going underwater, but the underwater premium is not infinite. I believe it's two acts. Um, and remember, the assume Nordic Coasts thing that I started doing this from, that compares to a Stockholm project that is partly underwater and has an underwater premium. And I was told specifically the underwater premium was a big part of it, and the construction cost of the Stockholm city station there, which is... Um, for two platform four track. I mean, it's two approach tracks, but um, it they fan out to four platform tracks because uh, uh, high dwells at, at rush hour. Um, 
that station, I believe, uh, that station I was told cost, I believe, 2 billion kronor maybe, or 1.5 billion kronor, so 150 to 200 million dollars. This is a station that went on level negative three, negative one and negative two of the uh, subway. Um, so, uh, and by the way, the rock in Stockholm is very hard, but it's also to some extent where Manhattan. So once you get the operations right, once you want to get the organization side right, the electronics kind of starts adjusting themselves when you start electrifying more lines, when you um, uh, move the signal blocks to be compatible with, for example, time transfers and very, uh, and, and very fast, and very, not fast, very frequent subway-like um, timetables. And, and then the concrete suggests itself just because of the various things that point in kind of opposite directions um, on, on opposite sides of Manhattan. And this is where the crayon starts. Um, yeah, they're trying to build the, uh, so yeah, they're trying to do the, uh, what is it, Ursund uh, Metro? Let's not pretend that I can actually get the, uh, the, the accent is not even Swedish accent. Uh, like the Ursund like the like the Metro. Um, yeah, yeah, that one. Yep. Um, so there's already a, there's already a bridge now between uh, between Copenhagen and Malmö, but um, apparently they want to build another one. Which is weird. They just uh, it just feels like maybe they should just run better figures over there, but I don't know. Um, but that's not even that. That's that's that, that's for capacity. I'm talking about more like when Munich had the lines feeding Hauptbahnhof and Ostbahnhof and just connected Hauptbahnhof with Ostbahnhof. Or how Berlin had all these historic. I, I keep going back to Berlin, um, but it's really good. It's just such a really good example. Um, so in Berlin, um, the the so Berlin, it might not show you the historic situation very well, but I'm going to try to. So um, even before the ring, and then, and then there was a, even after the ring and before the rest were built. So there was Charlottenburg, which pointed west. Um, there, uh, over here, there was Anhalter Bahnhof, um, pointing on the, on the one called the Anhalter Bahn, uh, this, I believe. Um, and then that's on, um, Potsdamer Platz had a station. I think it was just the one going to Wannsee, but I'm not sure. Um, here, you can even see the park on the terrain, Görlitzer Bahn, uh, it's called Görlitzer Parkteich. Um, so this used to be a station called Görlitzer Bahnhof on what is called the Görlitzer Bahn that goes like this. Um, and then all the way to the border town of, of I mean, also Cottbus, but uh, the final destination would be Görlitz, which is not even in uh, Brandenburg, it's in Sachsen. Um, currently, it's on the Polish border, the Polish border used to be far east of this. Uh, the, the city, the, the Polish city, um, um, what is it? Of course, that's. No, it's not. In the, okay, it's uh, Skorzelat. Yeah, so, so Skorzelat is just Polish name for Polish. Um So you take all of these historic terminals, so Charlottenburg, uh, Potsdam, uh, uh, Potsdam Platz, um, Anhalt, uh, Anhaltebahnhof, Gelitzelbahnhof, uh, Ostbahnhof, uh, which of course, well, East, uh, Nordbahnhof, which goes to, uh, I think the trains would go all the way up to, uh, what is it, Stralsund and Rostock, so these, so this part of Germany, and then uh, over here, you actually had, we, we actually had two stations, um, one called Hamburger Bahnhof, which would go like this to uh, Hamburg. Uh, and uh, then right next to it, and, and I think Hubble was later realigned to it, called Lerterbahnhof. Uh, Lerterbahnhof is the kind of origin of Hauptbahnhof. Uh, that just goes west. Um, then a newer line than, I think, Charlottenburg or something. Um, so they just connected these together. So Charlottenburg and Ostbahnhof were connected by the Stadtbahn. Nordbahnhof and uh, then Anhalter Bahnhof and also the lines to Potsdam Platz were connected by the north-south tunnel. Um, Gölitzel Bahnhof was just closed and the, and the Gölitzel Bahn was realigned to various uh, 
was just realigned to various um, parts of the ring. Um, yeah, oh, thanks for the map. Uh, thanks for the map, buddy. Um, and likewise, um, Hauptbahnhof is a stop on the Stadtbahn, but it did not actually get connected with anything until the new opening of Hauptbahnhof in 2006, I believe. Um, what they should be doing is connecting um, Hauptbahnhof uh, on a tunnel that's already being built called F21, going like this to Galta. What they're actually going to do is just go straight down, even though there are already four tracks that are going to make it six, and these tracks are severely under capacity. Um, but the point is that you just connect lines in opposite directions. Paris did the same, only a lot more complicated for Paris is a larger city. So in New York, this was partly done by the construction of Penn Station in 1910. The um, Penn, the Pennsylvania Railroad Terminal was here, was exchange place. This is why there's a path station. Path was just connecting terminals. So there was Communica, which is here. This was um, the Central Railroad of New Jersey, I believe. Then exchange place, which was Penn, um, also a subsidiary thing in Pavonia for Penn. Then the rest of Pavonia, so this is not from General Square, but from here, from the Bergen Arches. This was the Erie Railroad. Um, if you've taken path, uh, um, then you might care um, that uh, there's an E on the at the Newport station. It, it stands for Erie. Uh, the Lackawanna used Hoboken. Um, I'm forgetting which one. I think the West Shore Railway. So this line, the Northern Branch, is uh, Erie and went like this. But um, this is the West Shore, and it went, I'm forgetting where, but I think, I think it had the terminal around here, maybe. Um, so this is a historic tunnel that was used for a terminal for, uh, on the Jersey side, and all had ferries. Like where the LRR was here and here, they just connected them with Penn Station. So we just do more of that. Uh, part of it is already being done as the Gateway Project. Now, um, so... This is where, so I'm going to start drawing lines here. Okay, no, not this one. I want the one that terminates. Is just this one? No, it's the other one that is going to be very difficult for me to pick because I try to, because here I'm trying to draw the lines close to each other rather than with enough separation. So what is this line? Yeah, it's just, oh, it's just a short one. Okay, so I'm going to take this line and I'm going to start extending it. I'm going to actually build a new line so, um, to build gateway. Um, so let's start here. And we're going to go roughly parallel, right? So like this, because we're not changing the right of way. I mean, this is part of it is already four track, by the way. Um, so we're going to go here. Um, I'm going to actually uh, switch to the other side of the tracks here, because eventually this, I mean, clearly this is what the, I did before. But also, importantly, um, eventually you're below and not above, like south and not north. So you do this, uh, then you build gateway, which should be built as a, for, as a full four track line from New York to Newark. I mean, it should avoid extras like what Cuomo wants with a Penn Station uh, widening with adding more cracks to it. That's just, I don't even say extra, extras are things that are nice to have. This is not even nice to have, it's useless. And um, and this, so through Sea Caucus, um, where all trains should stop. A lot of trains today skip Sea Caucus, is wrong. They're also doing really dumb things at Sea Caucus. There's internal staircases between the Erie part of it and the part of it that feeds Penn Station. So very few people actually transfer there because the transfer experience is so annoying, unlike at Jamaica. And then, because the transfer experience is so annoying, people instead take buses to uh, Manhattan. So you do this, and then you build Gateway, where... So I'm portraying the... Uh, so this is a slight inaccuracy. So Gateway is already designed to have a lot of separation. Um, so it wouldn't be here, it would be more like here. Um, because I, 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 I asked once, I didn't ask anything official, but I was told 
that the excuse for this is redundancy because what if happened because they want separation underwater. I have no idea if it's ever. No, gateway is not going to include through running. So I'm going to do a good gateway. Was there ever any through running other than the services Amtrak inherent thing? I think there might have been some on the Pennsylvania that's somehow ending up at the Brooklyn terminal, like going Jamaica, doing some kind of weird thing with junctions to get there. But I think it was just tickets where you on the same ticket were just changed to a train and connect. Um, does Germany have U-Bahn versus S-Bahn rivalry? Um, historically, yes. I mean, West Berlin got the U-Bahn, East Berlin got the S-Bahn. There was a boycott of the S-Bahn the, uh, in, in the 1980s. Um, West Berlin was building U-Bahn lines very closely parallel to the S-Bahn, for example, U7 to Spandau, where um, to this point, it, to, to this day, it's overserved. So there's a lot more S-Bahn demand to the east and to the west because they wanted to build an all U-Bahn, all western service. Even when the S-Bahn was just, even S-Bahn lines that just stayed in the west were operated by the east, people in West Berlin loathed the east. Um, everyone talks about restoring the, like making socialism great again or something before neoliberalism or something. Here's what our actual socialist prime minister um, said in the 1960s when he was the uh, mayor of West Berlin. He called the wall the wall of shame. This is, I mean, people in West Berlin, this is how much people here, I shouldn't say here because I'm talking about the eastern side, um, although I'm pretty sure literally nobody who lives in my building um, grew up in East Berlin as an Aussie. Um, but anyway, the... Um, everyone in East Berlin, everyone in West Berlin loathed communism. Um, um, and yeah, it's not a difference of skin color because in Germany, both groups are very white. Um, not because the people who live in those cities like Berlin and Munich are all white. Just It's a thing in Germany. The public sector here is very white. Um, at any rate, uh, it's mostly immigrant minority. I mean, it's also a thing in America. In America, the public sector is disproportionately black, but it is not disproportionately Hispanic or Asian. I think Hispanics and Asians are profound over a lot of them. So you do this. Um, this is, I believe, the place where there's planned space for it. Penn Station. This is all planned. Um, I think they should do a better job, but it's planned, and now what I think they should be doing is... Um, so these are existing uh, stub, and tra uh, stub and tracks pointing to 31st Street. They were planned with the possibility of extending east. Um, a little bit of stuff was built in the way, but only if you're insisting on 2% grades because you think you might want to run electric locomotives with horrifically antiquated standards. If you do 4%, like in civilized countries, it's very easy to get around. Like what? So you do this. Wait, wait, wait. You do 31st. Do this, and then you start. Uh, curving, um, and there are worries that it conflicts with a subway, except these worries are incorrect, because if you work correctly, then you are... Okay, now I need to figure out which of these Grand Central lines I want to be seen is connecting to. I want to end up hitting the New Haven line, so the New Haven line is the western of the lines depicted here. So it stays Western, and then Hudson, okay, yep, merges into it. And then, so what I want is to end up here. Um, yeah, like this. And now, in order to avoid having a very small thing, I'm going to do fill and stroke, and instead of the default one pixel, let's do, I think it's 10 pixels. Yep. Okay. So this is gateway and, oh, okay. Um, and this is, so gateway is only up until here. What I'm proposing is do something that was called alternative D and was excluded from consideration in the early 2000s for reasons that are partly agency turf, partly they didn't, partly they thought the subway connection, Partly they thought this would um, require realigning a subway tunnel at high expense. It doesn't, but they thought that they needed to because of uh, uh, issues with the grades. So let's move, let's also move the station. The station should not be in the old tunnel, it should be in the new tunnels. 
um, because the node tunnels point to Grand Central and it doesn't go to Grand Central. So I, I would not even object to proposing, okay, when, when, while you're building this, um, spend like, an, like delay the opening of full track capacity by a year and hollow out the cavern here, but, or, or a year and a half and hollow out the cavern here, but, um, no, this is, um, this, this is because Amtrak should be using this. Maybe in the long run, I don't know. Um, so this is the line, what I call line two. This is already line, so, so this is kind of an incorrect line. The actual route is something like this. And I'm proposing to essentially realign it to, serve, to hit the local tracks of the LIRR, effectively. Um, and what I'm talking right now is I'm going to start coloring the lines that I think should be so connected. Um, yeah, I'm going to start coloring my crayon. So what I did originally was I had highlights for, uh, to, to, uh, uh, to separate things that are, I'm, things that I'm proposing and things that are already in existence or about to be in existence. Uh, why would New Haven have two routes into Penn Station? Because, um, there's a lot of urban ridership on both, otherwise they would do one, but this is a useful part of the Bronx to serve. This is also a useful part of the Bronx to serve. If you try to put everything through, there's going to be too much traffic. Um, so you need to do this. And also, this doesn't hit Grand Central very efficiently, and a lot of jobs are Grand Central. Um, but the Hudson Line, yeah, I mean, there's more capacity here, so go nuts on this and have less go into Grand Central to make room for other things. So I'm going to start, again, drawing, I'm going to start coloring things based on which route they're taking. So the um, old route should be in red. And um, the southern tunnels. Um, red is a line that everything that is in red exists. Um, so this is just everything that's red. That's it. Now, this is what I call line one. And I'm going to add labels, by the way, probably if I post this again, but um, not on camera, because on camera I can just, because because on camera you can just ask me and I can say. Um, so this is line one. Um, by, by, by the way, um, if I, um, I will, so all this exit, I will um, do uh, lines that are for planned lines, actually. Um, so let me do something like this, okay? So things that are under construction, I'm going to depict as if they already exist. So that includes gateway. But um, things that are not, uh, so I'm going to, so let's do this in green. Um, I'm forgetting if I did this green. I think, it, no, I think I did the darker green. Nope, not very strong. And I'm going to, um, so this is what I call line two. Um, and it's actually kind of a reverse branch of line one, um, but not quite. So for example, you want, you want to avoid you want reverse branching, but you want to do things like say that um, maybe all the express trains on the New Haven line go on line two. It's just a faster one, the, the green and the red. And also you want to remove traffic from the red. So the red should really just be about um, uh, local trains for the Bronx and, uh, and, uh, and Astoria until you can free enough capacity by moving high-speed rail somewhere else. And so this is line two. Uh, and line two connects to these. So uh, this. And on um, this and this. No. Nope. Okay. So this should be in green. This should be in green. Um, and I'm not, and I'm being, I'm not being terribly fussy with what is what. Um, so again, the all of the green trains should be. Uh, sorry, the green trains should be partly local, partly express. The red trains should all be local, just to. Um, it's kind of weird because this is a local station. It's just again maybe moving it. I, I don't know. Um, and finally, 
because there's so much traffic here that they can't share with Amtrak because of different speeds, but can share at low speed, this should also be right. Um, over here, everything is at the same speed, so you can do 24 turns an hour. Here you can't. Um, so this is line one. So, so this, by the way, requires, by the way, the electrification systems are different, but that's not a big deal. I mean, just get dual voltage drains. Just, I mean, they already have them on Metro North because the electrification system on Metro North so flip, flip, and, and maybe flip up until about here is the rail. In fact, different rail from the LRR. And from here, Onward and also the Northeast Corridor. It's a different. It's not even third rail. It's catenary, and it's high voltage catenary. This might have actually been the first high voltage catenary in the world. Um, it was uh, 11 kilovolt, 25 hertz on the New Haven line. It was it opened 1907, I believe, to Stanford, then 1915 to New Haven. Uh, and it's line two, and and I talked about this realignment here. So I'll just let's just. Detected. So this is the line they put in orange on most maps, um, and uh, this should be the one that it hits Hempstead. So it's this one. And okay, so this is the kind of the basic system through Penn Station. You might notice a lot of lines are missing from it. Oh, this is East Side Access. It's under construction again. So I'm going to depict it using the already existing color. Um, yeah, the tunnels are dual electrified. Um, the um, North River might be dual electrified, I'm not sure. Um, so anyway, this is kind of a three and a half line system. Um, now, if you do just this, and you probably want to, then you probably want to um, reduce West Hampton to a shuttle or something, and then these lines get to have cross platform transfers. So this is the Atlantic branch. I'm going to just pre-color it yellow with the usual color that I use for it. Um, it could be a dark yellow. And Mon but Montauk, you probably want to treat it as a Hampstead line, so it runs local here. Yes, it's low than Express, if you care that much. And the, po the point of doing this this way is that this way, um, you need to rebuild this junction, which they're not doing despite the third track project, but again, Easier than Herald. Herald was 250. This would be less um, rounding error compared with the benefits. Um, is that this way, all the trains from points east of Floral Park run the exact same stopping pattern, except that they have one branch. Um, so it's the uh, Port Jefferson versus Concomitant split, so this one. And Trains are only electrified up to Huntington, but um, from Huntington to Port Jefferson, it's one of the three busiest diesel lines in New York. Um, never remember the order. I sometimes look it up and then forget, but it's that one. It is so, so the Port Jefferson, um, Upper Hudson, so that is past uh, Croton Harmon to Poughkeepsie. Uh, this is Croton Harmon. And finally, um, a line that is actually already colored green. Um, a little bit in Jersey, it is the Raritan Valley line. This one. I may have forgotten the Union stop. Let me check. Um, I don't think so. I, I, I imagine I would have remembered, but let me just check. So, yeah, I forgot the Union stop. So, it, it is here. And it's plausible that there could be infill here. I'm not sure. Um, uh, by the way, this is an infill stop called South Newark or Newark South Street, um, designed to give better service to Newark. Um, committed from basically every plan because it's in Newark and people, and even in New Jersey, people think of commuter rail as not really public transit. As a... Oh, okay, okay. It was also, yeah, this is where I thought the tunnels were dual electric. I wasn't sure, but yeah. Um, I don't know, you do this. Again, this is, the, this is the basic system that gets to most everything. I mean, the Harlem line is what I think should draw the short straw and not connect to this. Um, maybe it could, I don't know. It's just that it's the electrification is a little more annoying. Um, this is probably only going to be the express tracks of the um, of the Harlem, of the Park Avenue Express. Like, all the trains make all the stops, so they make the Harlem stop. 
which is not even in Donald, they make Grand Central. But there's like historically, there's a there are historically two tracks that are I think in a more restricted clearance on the side. Um and um people who know better than me, like Robert Hale, keep telling me no, it's completely fine. You can do catenary, you can even re retrofit them with catenary. Um but um the, but, but it's just that the connection is kind of weird and um but but maybe I don't know. It's just I, I feel like in the long run the Harlem line should just be isolated. Um and not the New Haven line. Um, just because the New Haven line already gets partly, it, it partly gets this connection, so um, it's already interdependent, so might as well just isolate the Harlem line. So, so at this point, the way things run is um, there's, for example, I, I imagine it would be a shuttle from uh, Long Island City to Jamaica. Things are completely isolated, or this is an isolated system, everything hitting Hoboken. Um and probably would want to run these lines to either line to, to either the red or the blue or the green tunnel. Um, this is isolated. It's kind of points to the right direction to wh which direction to move it. This is, I mean, m maybe has a color and it is yellow, but it is still isolated. Um, so these are so this is a three line system or three and a half line system, and this is what I started crayoning, and it's something I started crayoning in two thousand eight, two thousand nine, with like a post of mine on tr the transport politics. Um, that it's still cited because it has better graphics. So what you do is you take all these eerie lines, um, and maybe even the northern branch. Again, historically it was eerie, and but less important in the history is the fact that um, it kind of points in the same direction, so it's toward here. Um, now, originally the idea was to go by Hoboken, but Hoboken is not a major business district, and there's already an existing right of way, which you can see on Google Earth, which is called the Bergen Arches. Um, the arches are not the line. The line is in a, uh, the line's not elevated. The line is in a, uh, is in a trench. Uh, in fact, it's actually a four-track trench where there are endless plans for what to do with it. Nobody knows what to do with it because they think a road, a park, and just make it a line, a two track rail, and you'll be happier this way. Um, and you can even kind of see that the, so maybe it's less obvious from the current location of Secaucus, which is the real line. Um, and you can even see that the old line had to have this kind of curve. Originally, the Erie, the old Erie main line went from here. You can't see this on the right side. From here, up the Bergen, um, then across the Bergen Arches, it would uh, using the uh, these uh, using this yard through here, not through the current location of Secaucus. Um, and now the Passaic Valley line, the Bergen County line, like this. And the old Erie Main line is not this; it's this one actually. Um, it went like this, and you can even kind of see remnants of the tracks. Um, to Patterson. This is a this is actually a Lackawanna line. This is where it points to where Hoboken better. Um, so this was a Lackawanna line called the Punton branch, which despite the name was not a branch, it was a high quality cutoff built to higher standards of the main line. It went like this. It didn't actually hit Patterson. It was very close, but it went like here, and then it was kind of overrun by the uh, uh, construction of the freeway. By then, they didn't think it was terribly important to preserve it, the Lackawanna. So it went like this. Um, double track, um, and hooked into this is this is uh, into this, and this is um, back to being a New Jersey transit line. Here's curvier, but um, this was so. But the old uh, main line of the Lackawanna was this one, so even curvier. Um, and all of the so this is currently called the Montclair Bluton line. So Montclair branch of the uh, Lackawanna. This is a random Erie line that was not built to very high standards. Then back to Lacu back to Lackawanna Bluton branch. Um, these you can either again make either a red or green in the interim, but but certainly the stuff that goes through this part of Secaucus, um, you can do a little bit of your element. So you're entering around here, but you see there's a lot of space, um, and you can just make sure that instead of going to Hoboken like this, you're going like this through the Bergen Arches. Um, and so I'm going to start a new line because I do want to, you know, uh, just, 
So this is the broken arches. Um, um, this should be the, this. You have to just tunnel, and uh, while you're tunneling, you probably want to not tunnel right next to the hall. Tunneling want to be at least somewhat separated. Then you want to hit maybe downtown Brooklyn, and you want to pass by a lower Manhattan. Now, there are a bunch of alignments of this. I have really old posts comparing Hoboken, Erie, like the different Erie that, is, that was used by, um, by not Erie, but the different Avonia that was used by um, the Pennsylvania and Exchange Place. Exchange Place is the biggest destination, but Newport is almost as big and it's easier. Um, the flip side of it being easier is you have to do more tunneling in Manhattan, but it's more north south tunneling, not east west. So you can do something like this. Um, so let's do Broadway, but again, it's all going to be deep tunneling and the only really difficult part is going to be the station, which doing it for a billion dollars would be a minor miracle. Um, because it needs to be a four track station because there are really two things here that have kind of lines pointing that they go slightly different. I think this is the correct separation because I'm going to blow it up. Um, and then you can maybe have a second stop at South Ferry, or probably not on this line. Um, so this. Um, this is, by the way, a tunnel under Atlantic, but it's not very usable. A lot of rail fans talk about reusing it, but you can't. Um, this is point the right way. Um, so you want to go maybe with another stop at Borough Hall, which is, remember, where all the downtown Brooklyn jobs are. Um, and then you go here. Um, and we need to color it appropriately. And hope for my right mouse button. You know, I can just click here, to be honest. Stroke. Style, yeah, 10 pixels. Um, put it underneath everything else. Nope. And stroke style. We said we should put uh, things that are not currently existing in dash. So this is dashed. Um, so dash means crayon. Um, so this was the thing that I started with. So at this point, so this is, I think, what I actually proposed in, on the Strap Hangers campaign forum in uh, 2008. Uh, and uh, then there was this awkward gap in which there was no way to get on regional rail between Lower Manhattan and Midtown, which is fine because it just used the subway. Um, but there's still the orphan. I think the Harlem line was supposed to be paired with an O'Donnell, and it's just, um, and there was just, but there was still a lot of extra um, you know, traffic that was just terminating the Grand Central. There has to be it's four tracks worth of capacity. It's only two tracks. Um, and then I realized, wait a second, literally serving every part of the metro area except for Staten Island. So here and here. Um, now, you may recall that there is a uh, premium for underwear. I mean, um, what I'm going to talk, I'm going to also rearrange the lines of that. Um, no, I don't want to create this. I'm, I'm just going to do a, this like this so that it's not going to randomly snap to the wrong thing. Okay, like this. And nope, uh, there's a method to my madness. The method being path break apart. And this needs to be one of these days I'll remember that double clicking um, is in point edit mode and not fill and not fill and stroke. So stroke style and it's the first big dash, okay. And I'm actually going to move, oh, shit, okay, so I'm going to, I, I forgot that they, okay, so I'm going to move this, no, don't go, to around here, and then move this, and it'll snap, okay. 
Um, and likewise, I'm talking about four tracks, which are under planning, but they're not actually being funded, unfortunately, the four tracking around here. And I don't even know where to start it because much of this is four tracks. Um, it's mostly Portal Bridge that is the annoying part. Um, so it's possible that I'm just going to do something really awkward because this is four tracks. Um, and I believe Gateway is going to four track up until here, but I'm not sure. Um, so um, okay, so more importantly, I'm going to actually. Okay, so let's do. Let's break the path here. Uh, so two. And let's also break it here. Path. Break apart. And then this is where I'm going to make dash. Um, because really, my assertion is fix portal bridge, goddammit. Uh, and the real, I guess the realignment is a little bit of, is a little bit new. So let's so um, this becomes two things. This becomes two things. Path break apart. And this should, as usual, be, thanks for the advice, uh, dashed to indicate this is my crown. Um, and finally, uh, let's not forget this. What is wrong with my right mouse click? This is not currently existing or proposed. Okay, so this is, so I thought, and I thought, huh, these lines point toward each other, so let's do something about it. So this led to the Harlan line. Oh, 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 and, uh, and, and I forgot that. Uh, so this is, I guess this should also be viewed as um, kind of in the crayon color, because it's, even though it's under plan, it's planned in theory, it's not part of the East Side Access project. So let's do it like this. Um, but I'm absolutely no. There's a level of zoom beyond which the annoyingness of clicking on similar things vanishes. Whereas this is okay. Whereas today the orange thing is just the green thing. So you do this, and let's color it blue. Um, the Harlan line is in blue. The Staten Island Railway is coincidentally also in blue. This is not why I think they should be connected. Um, rather, they just point towards each other. So the idea is, and I apologize to residents of Staten Island that they didn't even that they even truncated. So I'm depicting parts of Long Island, Jer lots of Jersey, some Westchester, but not the southern parts of uh, Staten Island, like talking about. Um, I could overlay this on a bigger map if need be. So, um, from the end of the line, which is here. Okay. Now, uh, let's draw a Bezier curve. Bezier, Bezier. I do not know how that word is pronounced. And this, so an actual engineer is going to need to make a decision on how to build. Now, lots of different possible alignments. For example, you can try to hit Red Hook. I don't think it's valuable. I think Red Hook should get a subway extension on the one. But maybe. Governor's Island is actually not a bad place to stop at. Um, either for TOD or for the park. I'm not sure. Usually I depict it not stopping at Governor's Island on my maps, but... Um, we do this, and then we interchange over here, and we go roughly under Broadway, maybe. Um, again, most of it is not important or retreat. The really hard part is going to be building the station. 
Um, if the station is especially far north, like if you try to build it more like city halls are around here than World Trade Centers are around here, you might even want an extra stop at South Ferry. Um, then you keep going up, you build a station, which we're going to get to in a little bit, at Union Square. There's a lot of space to, I mean, you need to dig up Union Square for this, but that is eminently possible. Um, now, uh, I think we remember which side of our, okay, so it's going to be around here. Like this. And uh, it is in blue. It is this wide because all lines are, and it is in the crayon color. Um, and it already passes through the Union Square thing. So you absolutely want to stop at Union Square. It's an important destination. It's a, I think this is a, it's a number four subway. It's a number four subway uh, stop in New York in pre-corona ridership. It goes Times Square, Grand Central, Herald Square, Union Square. So very important station, connection to the L, which is orthogonal. Um, quite a number of jobs close to the NYU campus. Um, even kind of catches parts of the southern end of Midtown, which to some extent stretch all the way to Madison Square, maybe even to Union Square itself. Now I keep talking about how they should not have, there should not have, there should not be missed connections on the subways, and yet I'm programming one between the blue line, which I'm going to call line four, while the yellow line is one, is line five. So I'm crayon, so I'm crayoning a missed connection between tunnels between Penn Station and Long Island, and tunnels between Grand Central and Lower Manhattan. The reason for this is twofold. First of all, building the so, so building a second stop here on, on, on the blue line is not going to be that hard. I mean, it's it's going to be hard. Don't get me wrong, but you can probably find a space where it may be under Madison. The hard part is going to so so first of all, you're going to need to re retrofit these on probably not the red color line, the orange line. So line three, not line one. Um, but also. That kind of makes the tunnel a little, maybe a little bit too local. And I know the RPA has that, and I don't think it's a stupid idea to do it this way. I just think it's better to make maybe make it a little more express, just because, I mean, maybe a, a, an infill. May, I mean, if there's an infill here on line three, then it should also be on. Then you should also do this on, on line four. But but even the infill on line three, I'm not sure how valuable it is. Um, especially because, I mean, from any destination, you can hit Grand Central better because if you're line three and if you're from points east, then you have a cross-platform transfer at Sunnyside Junction, which is an infill I'm proposing, in addition to this infill that is officially proposed, um, and you get to Grand Central. And if you're going from points west, from anywhere, you can just ride the trains that go to um, Grand Central. So... This is not a terribly valuable stop. So this is a weird case in which I think that it is correct to program a misconnection. I'm not certain about this, but this is what I currently think. I mean, it's what I've thought for a while, but this, but it's not like I've ever been especially certain. So this is the, what I call the five and a half line system. Um, so line one is red, line two is green, and it's basically gateway. So line one exists, line two is gateway, line three is the Empire connection to the Long Island Railroad and, and to, the, to the local tracks of LIRR and then Hempstead. Um, and then um, and then the Empire connect and then the Empire connection with the and, and it requires a little bit of infrastructure in the in the um, realignment. So this is why I was uncertain how to depict this part. Whether it be to dash or not, this all exists. It needs to be electrified, but it exists. This part is a little bit of a realignment. A little bit without without station, but still. I mean, build the infills, obviously. This line th so anyway, line one is red, line two is green, line three is orange, line four is blue, and it's the most complicated tunnel in the part that everyone has been yelling about me. Has, has everything, it's the part that everyone has been yelling at me about in comments and on Twitter, going back to when I first posted this in 2009. Um, that it's too 
excessive, that it's difficult, that it's too difficult, there's an underwater period. Yes, it is, just not infinite. But remember, the underwater period is not infinite. Um, and um, that you can make, that it's bad that you maybe move it around. I mean, Staten Island needs a connection to Manhattan, too. Um, and uh, so this line four and line five is this part. It's the uh, um, it, it's what is often called Greater Hoboken to downtown Brooklyn. It's not. It's Erie to downtown Brooklyn. It's often called Hoboken because Hoboken is the existing terminal. And my first map, and by say my first map, you and a framework made the map. Uh, made the uh, was uh, um, assuming Hoboken. Um, so people keep referencing maps that are a map that is. 12 years old at this point, almost. Maybe more than one. Yeah, so, um, so this is the five and a half line system. Um, and then purple gets to be maybe line six without the running. But the thing is, if you kind of connect everything as you should, so you, if you connect the northern line and the west shore over here, that's five branches on one line. It's an overload. And likewise here, I think um, connecting these, by the way, to line two or something is, or, um, is not actually an overload. Um, but, but it's busy. Um, and now there's a line that very neatly points in that direction, which is the Montauk line. And so, um, sorry, sometimes people ping me my email. I have been emailed by, 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 by signal. And so, um, because again, you have, as is often the case with an s bond or, or an RER tunnel, but like, um, when you have two terminals pointing in opposite directions, um, you want to make sure that they are connected. Now, this is city center and this isn't, but that's equally true of the Munich s -Bahn. Remember, Hauptbahnhof was in city center. Ostbahnhof wasn't, but so on. I mean, or in Berlin, likewise. In Berlin, some of the stations and some of the historic stations here had pretty good penetration. Same thing in Paris, by the way. Um, so, so what? You don't connect? No, you do connect. Um, you just um, you, you just praise whichever deity you would like, like the god of railways or something, that you have the good penetration already, so we don't need to spend as much money on it. Um, and so you, what you do is you, first of all, you build what I call line sex. So this is this. Um, and then... So this infill station is kind of, it's not infill, it's an infill station, it's kind of weird. The correct, the reason I believe it, it is good is that, first of all, it's a not quite north-south, but partly east-west thing, and you're connecting it to north-south lines. This, uh, so this is supposed to connect with the west fourth stop on the A, B, C, D, E, F, M, sorry, and also maybe with the one train. Um, possibly path nice street if you really stretch your eyes. And so, um, this I think is a good idea. And, uh, and also it serves the NYU campus. Now, granted, Union Square does the same, so it's not something I'm 100% certain about, but it's something that I think is good. Um, the one two line, the one two line is like no ESA is line six. So the purple line, oh the half line, sorry, yeah, the half line is ESA. Yes, it's number. I, I number it internally with six, and again I will add labels. So, um, so the idea is, and, and now you just take the entire Lackawanna system, um, except for the kind of eerified main line here. And you turn that into line six. Um, so this is the six line system, and then the problem is that kind of the lines that want to be connected to, sorry, the, the line, the central line that the Babylon branch wants to connect here to is um, line five, and then but again you're overloading line five. So the point is that both of the so both halves of moral line five are overloaded um, with either. Northern Branch and West Shore, or with Babylon, and this is where relying on the lower Montauk gets nice. And the problem is, of course, it's probably very difficult to have the train connect. So the problem is that the tunnels start down here, so you can't have the 
um, other. So, so, it's re, so I don't think you could build a station stop for uh, for Sunnyside that's not Sunnyside by Long Island City around here. So you kind of have to do this here. And can you do something like this? Probably. I'm not sure. Um, so that should definitely be investigated. Like I, not again. I'm not wedded to every single alignment question that I make. This is, by the way, why I prefer analytic posts to maps. Often I can express doubts. Uh, more easily that way. Um, so this is line seven. So this is so I'm just showing you the process of um, of the crowning. And again, it's it's crown, but there's a reason they spent so much time going over timetable, going over the timetabling, going over labor problems, uh, going over fares. Um, I mean, there needs to be some little some extra electrification a little bit here, but thankfully not that much. Thankfully the system is almost entirely electrified. You just finish electrifying the tails, maybe until then we do a forced transfer or a, uh, by the way, this is deliberately undefected. This is the Oyster Bay branch. It can possibly fit into line six, but I'm guessing it's just going to be a forced transfer for a while just because over here there's very high traffic. Over here there's very light traffic. They need one or two trains per hour crash hour and here there's something like 20. So it's actually useful to minimize branching. All trains run local. I mean, between here and City Center, maybe they run express, but up until here, don't do what they do today where there's a lot of express service and really complex patterns and a lot of schedule padding because the trains need to overtake each other. And at Russia, where the trains run one way, uh, local and express, because local is usually not very local. It's usually expressed with everything and expressed in some trains stop at one of the intermediate stops and um and they're building the third track at very high cost on this because they and they say this is what will enable off peak service no it wouldn't uh, reverse peak service no it won't they could, you can run reverse peak service now you just need to stop promising the uh you, you just need to stop promising that you'll treat everyone like they're special snowflakes and give them all express service honestly if you do it correctly and run simple schedules, you will not need to pad your timetable 30%. It's literally padded 30%, by the way, the timetable. Um, you, you look at the performance bucks of the current rolling stock at the current speed limits, um, and you compare that with actual timetables. The actual timetable is the is what the trains can do, plus about 30%, and it's more normal to pad 7%. So just through getting rid of the schedule padding, is gonna, you're going to save people most of the wasted time through running local. Um, okay, so you have, so this is, these are kind of, so we have line one red, line two blue, uh, line two, sorry, line one red, line two green, a point green here, but most of the trains are going here. Line three orange, line four blue, line five yellow or dark, or dark enough yellow that it's seen on the white map, line six purple, and line seven turquoise. Um, and this is where, the S bundling gets a little bit um, more speculative just because. So I don't want to. So I'm going to move things around a little bit. So I'm just going to cut this and start a. Uh, and this means I'm going to need to move this. But that's fine. Um, and I've drawn this differently at different times. It's not. As critical as it looks like. Um, and I'm going to actually cut this to. Here and then. Let's draw. Here. And again, you could even do something where they go. Like maybe not depart here, but depart here and do this. If you really want, um, uh, and I'm going to portray the tunnel as going under 43rd Street. Now, if you want to be even more speculative and do like not seven lines, but line eight and nine for like capacity, if you think that's going to be important, which is very much a New York City has abolished most zoning restrictions and decided that looking like they pay Seoul and the inner districts of Tokyo is good, which I think it is, but very NIMBY city, unfortunately. Um, 
just do this. And turquoise and stroke style pen dash. So 10 dash as opposed to the nine dash line, uh, which of course means nothing, just as uh, nothing happened. Um, Nothing of note happened in Beijing on the 4th of June, 1989. Nothing is happening in Xinjiang right now. Nothing is changing in Hong Kong. Uh, any person who says something to the contrary is invited to um, apologize personally to Xi Jinping. Um, so, um, the, so this is kind of where, it, where it, my thinking is about the crayon. But again, it's not mostly crayon. The crayon follows getting the operations right, it follows um, get, getting the correct rolling stock. Which not, I mean, the rolling stock in New York, for example, is incredibly conservative, which was okay 20 years ago because it was maybe 20 years conservative, but now it's 40 years conservative, and it's not even being made. I mean, the problem is that American agencies are at this point a nightmare client for everyone, to the point that everyone charges them a premium, and the, the international vendors, I mean, they, they know it's incredibly difficult to work with them. And even though trains are trains, and you could very easily do, and, and all the real dif differences are modular, so things like clearances, it's very easy to stretch a train. Um, electrification, I mean, th th there's so many different standards in Euroland as well. It's just that um, th they keep insisting on getting terrible trains that are a generation out of it and not being made anymore. And then they say, oh, it's impossible to buy a train for two and a half million dollars per car. You have to pay four or five million. You get the government you pay for. Um, but um, so so it, it's mostly about improving governance. It's mostly about so again everything falls under the organization. You get the fares right, you get the frequency right, um, you get the labor costs right, and yeah, people will start riding and then they will crowd the train at all times of the day, and then it'll become feasible to not do what I did when it was just a bunch of black lines running in different directions, but these colored lines that connect and run through the city. Um, and yeah, it involves a lot of tunneling. This is something like, um, I, th I think the assumed order cost maps at 43 kilometers. And again, you can go even more speculative and do something like a tunnel under 44th Street or maybe do a weird thing where the two lines are inter uh, interweave under 43rd and 44th. So um, it's cross-platform transfers in the, correct, in the same direction and, and do another line that, let's say, goes to the airport or something, and that's when you start thinking about maybe doing the um, Rockaway Beach Ranch um, and, and, and serving there and, and, and having the Rockaway serve by commuter on the subway and um, and then uh, on this side maybe do some really weird things that aren't even especially necessary with the um, service to Newark or to, I mean not Newark, let's say Newark Airport um, resuscitating maybe a handful of lines that are not affected, so things like so this is a line six um, called the Suzy Q, um, New York, Susquehanna, and Western. They call themselves the S, uh, USQ, so Suzy Q. It's this line. You might notice it doesn't even have transfer stations with everything. It, these were all competing railways. Um, they mostly marketed themselves as um, running on cleaner coal, I think, than the other railroads. So they have the, the roots of anthracite. Um, and it also had some commuter rail service, but it was not, I don't think it was ever an important commuter rail line, and it was mostly competing with the Erie, so so, so when it's public, you just keep the Erie. Um, but if you really want, you can try to re revive that and, and as a line six line and then build extra info. Um, you can do weird things with the historic Erie main line that I think should be subway and not commuter rail. And you can always cry and more. I think these are just the ones that are kind of naturally pointed out from where the terminals are um, when to get the organization right. Now, I thought this would be a one-hour stream and it's a three-hour stream, so um, I will take questions if anyone wants. Um, and if nobody has questions, I will stop. Um, and the usual thing with every video, I give it a couple minutes because there is delay, people take time to time. Um, so thanks all of you for, for watching. Thanks all of you for sticking for, for sticking with me for so long. And the crayon, the, the crayons are always the ones that take the longest. It's just that um, 
it's just that there. I, I can't ever tell if people want more analytic or more um, crayony things. So I try to strike a balance. I'm going to give it probably until maybe 9.15 if people want to get on it. And as I said, um, I will probably post this crayon on my blog. And the version that I will post for I will link to it in the video when I upload it. Um, so if you're watching this on YouTube, um, see down below for a link. And the link is going to be a more finished version of this with labels because Richard Mineric complain to me that uh, my unlabeled posts are difficult to read and that the um, PNG exports are huge and it's easier to do lossy JPEG compression, um, same way that um, World War III maps, that, um, let me actually see. So I know there was a World War III map, I think the biggest are the Europe ones, and yes, I said Euroland, not Europe. Um, you know, I don't actually need to look at the current map. So, so the World War III map exports are about eight megs, and the JPEG lossy compression, which is the exact same size, it doesn't. Uh, the Twitter uploads don't shrink the size. Um, I think are about four hundred. So there definitely is a thing to be said for lossy compression. It's just. Sometimes the lossless is better. Sometimes. Um, let me see if I answered all the previous questions. I think I did. If I didn't answer something you said, just yell at me. Um, I mean, if nobody has any questions, I can just end this. Thanks for watching. Sorry for the exhaustingly long stream. As I said, crayon always takes longer than expected. Um, partly because explaining every bit of it as it's happening can get rather wonky, and partly because um, just the physical process of adding circles, adding lines is a thing. I don't I'm not even sure if they, you know, do you think if I want a stop? Oh, right, right, right. I mean, I even forgot that I think that there should also be a, uh, so I wrote this thing in the style of, uh, so I wrote this thing in the style of um, the regional rail docks um, that we're doing in, uh, uh, for Boston, for New York, just to see how, di how it would differ. But, um, um, but but I have a somewhat different stopping grounds. I have something called Triboro Junction. Um, so that would be, so just for compatibility, let's go. Uh, I'm not even sure it's this, but it, it's probably, it's this and probably these two stops can have some kind of transfer between them. Um, and then Forest Elsky Garden, Jamaica, Merrick. Um, is it there? Yes, so, okay, so here actually, the stop doing it. yeah, okay, Jamaica, then Merrick, Hollis, Queens Village, it exists, uh, Belrose, um, Belrose, I think, is the first one that's outside city limits, it's a very nimby place, Floral Park, and this is all uh, Hampstead stuff, so Stuart Manor, Nelson Boulevard, Garden City, um, 
Country Life for Us in Hempstead, or in this version, uh, East Garden City, which is at Oak, and then Nosso Center at Endo. So this is Oak. So actually, this line continues a little bit past this. Um, it's just maybe difficult to see because of further dash, and like the, the line continues a little bit farther. Um, you see, it's just dash. Um, Yeah, I'm going to post this. Yes, it's a post on bad observations. Yep. Um, so we wrote this up. I got kind of the feedback that I expected to get, which is very different from the feedback in Boston. In Boston, there's a lot less. Oh my God, this is technical. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot less. Let's call it old timer ne technical nitpicking. Um, so people taking something that is utterly trivial in Europe and saying that it's actually a billion dollar project. Um. Yeah, no, thanks for watching. I mean, so 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 thanks for watching. Um, thanks for the questions. Um, thanks for the link, for example, the card about um, my post about the, about the Hempstead line. Um, so I will see you possibly in a week um, for another stream uh, in uh, on an undecided topic. So thank you, guys. Um, good night. I mean, good afternoon for you. It keeps the kind of say it's getting dark outside. The days are getting shorter, but we're still early. So thanks, guys, and see you next time.